It's been 14 long years for Marble Range and Success in life comes from falling down seven times and getting up eight. Yeah. And now we are well and truly looking at a Marble Range Premiership. Looking for Calderwood and he takes a mark, a good mark. He, he nearly played on but he takes his time now. Goes short looking for Max Black. Black takes it on his own and bombs it in long. Who's there? It's all Marble Range. It's all Marble Range. And I think, is it Jesse Trevor? I'm not too sure. But he'll turn around in a minute and we'll see what number it is. But this will be... Yeah, no, it's Casanova, Jeb Casanova. And now Casanova, he is only five metres out on a slight angle. He will put this one through and he'll kick it over the back of the uh, cars there. And it'll take a while to get this one back, I reckon, because he will just belt this through the goals. Runs in now. Comes in. And he does. A beautiful kick. Jeb Casanova's first goal. And he's, he's being hugged by his players, and that will be the nail, final nail, in the coffin here at Centenary Oval in the 2022 Grand Final. Marble Range, eight goals, seven, 50 what? <laughs> seven. 55. 55. They lead Tasman's 5-4, 34. And it's been a complete, uh, just about a complete shutout here in the second half to Marble Range. They have been very, very good. They uh, just have showed their class all over the ground. Tasman's have battled hard, but gee, this is a good footy side. This is an amazing team that have won, now have been undefeated for two complete seasons. The heart rate will be up, There's, uh, and that's it. You're right. I mean, yeah, not much time left at all. Well, so the first thing I thought we'd have a look at yep. is when I first uh, came across your particular era. Yep. So way backs have come from nowhere. I remember watching this game on the side. Yes. And I hated when we lost. Yeah, always good to win at Wangaree and... Um, Could you believe it? No. Nah. Tell you what. After having such a good start, which was uh, 2020. Game at Wangari who were up by 33 points or something like that and then end up losing, I think. Yeah, like yeah. We're, we're up all game and lost by about two points, yeah. I reckon. Watson, Seal got him. I'll tell you what, Ned oh, Brooks did. He's got did, him streaming out in the middle there. Ned Brooks did absolutely nothing wrong there. It just shows you how good Jonty is. So uh, last time I set out in the fall, I'll stick with that. Hopefully we get the same result. He's a little bit quicker this time. He must be up and about. He's got it. You said he's a confident player. And uh, obviously the confidence is there. Way back's in front. Hmm. Because that is a good point to start it. Yeah. Because obviously that was, uh, that was an interesting day and you had a bit of a chat with the boys after. Yeah. You almost won it for him at the end with that good goal. Yeah. I thought we got back into it there. <laughs> <laughs> Reese is the player, he gets a quick handball to Burgoyne, Burgoyne who goes to Casey Amos, and oh, Casey gosh. is just... I'm just getting deja vu, he used to destroy us when he played from Ellie Park, now he's doing the same thing yeah, in front a Amos of him. straight to Boyd West, so... Yep. Crazy, back when West he used to have an impact on the game. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're never sure. You're never sure. When you've got Blaze K running around in the big road, you, you're never sure. <laughs> Okay, so here's, a, here's probably a, a change you wouldn't have seen coming. So Hatsamalis, who was absolutely killing it in the back lines and snagged a goal, has, uh, has just swapped with Brock Lowby into the ruck. So he's been pretty good, Hatsamalis. So Wes, oh jeez, he's kicked through the middle. And uh, I tell he's you got what, three. We say that, we say Tynan clearly puts his hand up, but Boyd West, was there a cheer? That was louder from Boyd West than it was from the whole game. I didn't actually park. think anyone was like, they've been a bit quiet the last 25 minutes, the crowd, but they're still here, Dipper. They're yeah. still here. Uh, it's a great game of footy. I don't think anyone's going to leave today. Um, what happened there? Like, they were just very good or you had a little bit of yips there? or? Yeah, I think it was a bit of a combination of a lot of things. Like, I don't think our fitness was up to scratch. I think we made some poor decisions. Um, I think they, as soon as they got momentum, we didn't really know how to arrest that from them which is something that we worked on uh, quite
quite a lot over the last three years about those key moments and not letting teams have momentum for a, a long period of time. Subsequent to this or already at this stage you were trying to work on it? Uh, we trialled it. It was probably just implementing it at this stage. You know, talk about a right time to start sort of filming the club. Yeah. No, I picked a perfect time. <laughs> Seems like a long time ago, you know. Oh, crazy. Ooh, he's double teamed, can't quite get there. The man from behind was a little bit of a surprise for him, I think. Lincoln District's come now, they come well. Pretty bias. Big Jed Wolford again. He's had a great carnival, having a great year. Having a good time out there at Wongri. Good people, good times. Ooh, he's trapped it. Did alright, the fella. Burnt the free kick. Deserved that. Pretty bias. Bias, another good player. Yeah. Has he always been around the club? Yeah, yeah. His dad, Critter, played for Marble Range. Um, yep. So he's always been a Marble Range. Yep. I've got a bit of footage of him playing for Woodner. Yeah. Really Bias chasing this one down. Oh, that is great work. Yeah, he knows where those goals are. Tell you what, are, this, this is not far off the he's mark. And he's got it. Yep. Great goal from Billy Bias. Well, let's put Woodner ahead for the That's... first time of the game. Yeah. Because he went up there just yeah. that first game of the year? Yep. Because they start. Oh, yeah, Billy, yeah, yeah of else. course, yep. It's young Bennett, I think. So there's two Bennett boys, of course, both can play. One of them, a very fine commentator as well as a footballer. It's Hayden. Jacko Bennett. Jackson Bennett, of course. Oh, look at that. He was, he was our key forward all year and has been for the past five or six years. So he always gets nearly two players put over to him. Ooh, all those Rangers can play. Jackson Bennett can play. Billy Bias can play. Nice little pass to Spog. Another Marble Range superstar. They do have a superstar team this year. And this bloke's the skipper, can play. Knows where the goals are. But most of the time, Tyner touches it, generally turns into something. It's a scoring opportunity too, so. Game on. That's that Jeb Wolford. Can play. Mm, great player. Yeah, state representative now. Is he? Yeah, he didn't. He hadn't played ruck before. I don't think he. Yeah, he. Did. Look like, at that. Oh. <laughs> he, uh, yeah, no, Jed hadn't rucked much before he came to us. Really? And then, uh, yeah, he was. He represented state this year. I'm surprised he hadn't rucked a lot. Like, nah, where was he playing he was before? Like a winger. Yeah, really. Like a real big winger. And then he just. I think he used to just sweep behind the play and just intercept yeah. Mark. Because he's got those skills. Yeah. Handball on. Minnie gets the ball onto his left foot, but it's out very wide. What will the bounce do? Bounces in favour of. Corey Beard. Lance Appleby, oh, he can't quite break the tackle, but he's got it clear. He's put it out in front of the goal mouth. Good spoil there by the way back player, comes to ground. Way backs pick it up, get a handball out, then another one out to Evenden. Evenden now clears long, but Jed Wolford in the road there. And the umpire says, you've got to come back, Sam, big Sam Hines. Wolford now plays on, goes across the side, looking for, oh, oh he can't take that. Oh, that is a free kick. Yeah. Very much a classic modern ruckman. Yeah. All the ground skills yeah. and, the, and the run. Yeah. That's true. Bryce Marshall now coming back into the centre. And the mark taken by Jordan Clements, the male medalist. He decides to play on, going away to that left-hand wing. Lovely And there's kick. a bit of a lead. Yeah, and that's beautiful a great kick. kick right onto the chest of, I think that's Tynan Keeley. No, gets is that Caldwell? Gets the handball, does Caldwell away to Billy Bias. East Sanders, that, that is a magnificent yeah. kick. And that was your first grand final, Zach? Win, yep. Win, yep. Looks like Boyd West gets a handball out. Uh, that was... Re uh, Oh, well done, Max Black. Gets it onto his left foot, into the middle. Spoiled away from Minnie. 
by Ian Ello. In they go way back. Now, Evan gets it out towards Jericho. He gets the handle out. Good one out there to um, Xavier Watson, who passed into Johnny Shield. He can't take the mark. Pressure comes out from Wade Hanson. Wade Hanson chases Maxfield, just dodges, puts it onto the right group, but kicks to nobody there. And it was uh, looks like uh, Zach Cordell takes the mark. In how many years? Oh, it started, I don't know, 2009. Might have solidly started playing yeah, some A grade, maybe. Did you think it was slipping away? Or were you. Oh, yeah, 100%. And I was, I was content. I wasn't too worried. Like, you know. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Played footy, I've had fun. And then, yeah, just the icing on top, I suppose. Yeah. Get a couple and milk it as long as he can. And just a little bit of lack of talk there. And Zach mopped it up. Go for goal. Young yeah, Billy. Billy, go oh, for goal. Oh, I tell you what, he's, he's, got, he's, it. he's, got, he's got, it. got it. He's probably a little bit lucky he didn't run too far. He took a lot of steps <laughs> there. So. Zach Calderwood from North Shields. Yeah, Louth. Yeah, yeah. Which is Marble Range Territory. Yeah. But we had, so, well, you'd know, Pete, we had a lot of players. Wongley called and then we'd sort of picked up the Colts with the soldier settlement sort of thing. That's right. Winilla area. Settled. So we were all through Winilla yep. and then North Shields <coughs> sort of joined us as well. So we had a yep. really good, uh, yeah. I can remember training at, Win at Winilla a couple of times just as a mm. junior Colt. Would have been pre-season probably like right at the start. Right. Just went over there for a kids thing, kids training. Yeah, well, when the junior Colt started, like. Uh, a large contingent of lads came from the Vanilla district yep. from those soldier settler blocks. Yeah. About our age. Yep. You know, half the team sort of thing came from over yep. that way. Yeah. And there were a few of them were pretty handy too. Mm. And in fact, talking about uh, um, North Shields, that's why that pre season footage is at North Shields. Yeah, yeah, nice yep. bring that Marble in. Marble Range yeah, are doing yeah. their pre-season, which apparently yep. is traditional, and and also uh, used apparently Marble Range used to train one night a week at that that was the the Lincoln training was at North Shields. Yep, I think for twenty years or something. And the other yeah, and once the season starts, the other reason we train out at Dorwood now is because there's no free ovals or ovals available to us in Port Lincoln. Yeah, correct. So yeah. Uh, oh, so you still train out there. We started again two years ago. Oh, did you? Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. On the Tuesday night. Mm. We used to we used to do a Monday night at Ravendale for quite a few years, and Mondays is hard work. It's almost just like a recovery night, and you'd get reduced numbers, and just yeah, we got a jack of it. And E mm. um, United, I think, mm. had a sort of a bit of a hold with Dort Oval, mm. and then yeah, they yeah released that, and we jumped in. So mm. yeah, and yeah, like Tim says about the catchment, like it takes in that. Copio, White Flat, Louth Bay, North Shields area, and yeah, makes you stronger and stronger. Marble Range, it's 4 12 36, trailing waybacks, 5 10 5 40 on the Curtis of Sales and Service scoreboard. And the excitement's reaching Fiji now. Uh, that's uh, Jericho, runs out, booms it long, but straight down the throat. How good has Ned Brooks been in this last five minutes? He's marked everything. Yeah, geez, Ned was good that day. Forget about that, there's a few stories along the way. Yeah, go on then. Yeah, like Lance with his hamstring. We did the, mm. the test that morning mm -hmm. across there. It was between him and Gil who were going to get in. And mm -hmm. um, Lance come up all right and he played a ripping first half. And I think it started to get to him a little bit in the second. But mm. that first half, geez, he was good. Mm. And then Ned on that day, just, he was unbelievable. This is a very important, he's got to, he wants to get this out of defence as far as he possibly can. He'll take his time. The clock's ticking down. We're into time on. Now he plays on, onto his left foot, goes out wide, looking for and finding Jed Wolford, a lovely kick. Held his composer beautifully now. Jed Wolford on the half-back flank for the Marble Rain side here at Centenary Oval. The crowd, not, it's called to play on, goes to run around, gets it onto his left foot, goes out to centre wing. Up they go, great grab. Oh, big grab, fantastic. Cometh the hour, cometh the man. Well, tell me about Corey Beard. Yeah, just a... Star, star player, star person, really. Uh, he's going back to lock this year, so that would be a significant loss for us. But, but how did he come to come to Marble Range? Because he's a lock boy. Yeah, so he just didn't want to go because his partner Jess, her family's uh, Ramblers. 
mm -hmm. I think. And then he's obviously had strong connections to Locke, but I don't think he was ready to go back there yet because he didn't want to make a decision mm. between Locke and Ramblers. Right. Um, and he had some connections at our club and, mm. geez, we're happy to get him. Mm. And James blew it again, so he's actually having a pretty good game, Bluey. Next wide to George. George, he's got pretty good skills, but unfortunately that one's cut off by... Uh, big Corey Beard, mate. Corey Beard. I'll tell you what, any, nobody it is. else would have been able to get yeah, that. I was going to say, it was a pretty good effort to cut that off. four and he's got long yeah. arms longer than that. It changed our fortunes a fair bit. Um, just the quality he brings, you can feel the way he trains. Yeah. It's just like everyone's on another level. Oh yeah, he's got such a like, presence at training and games. Like That's what people don't really notice. Like, people notice his footy skills, but he's just got a massive presence. And an attitude, probably. Yeah. Every time he comes out, they're just his presence, but he's just such a good bloke as well. Yeah. Had some adversity in life, and we've certainly tried to support him as much as we can through that, and mm. he's given us a lot. So mm. I was more than happy to for him to go back this year and just fulfil what he wants to do at Locke. And well, he's got all his mates, his best mates, and that have come back to Locke, so he felt a bit of obliged to go back there. And so that would be great to fun. see Locke get up and win. Yeah. Him. They'll have a pretty good team this year too, so. Great. Little fumble, which is rare for him. And we got Corey Beard. Uh, mate, he's just magnificent, isn't he? Hey, well. Got the good handball out, and uh, young Corey Hatsamalis again. So, and a good grab by Boyd West. So he's paid advantage, not paid advantage, and. Yeah, the way that crowd's getting involved already. Well, the umpires are confused, so no wonder the players are. I think he did call it back, but... They're very, very confusing. I don't think the way back players stopped, so... Let the, uh, let the ball go, I reckon. From about 47, well, it's probably, he's got the carry. Well, it's, he, he, he's right on his limit, but he's in a rare spot that uh, if he doesn't get it, he spots up for grabs. Exactly. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, we got a, the, we got a... One of the benefits of being the coach, though, which I found out over the last three years, you can pick yourself... No questions asked. It'd be difficult to do it again, especially when you lose guys like Corey, but it's just another opportunity for someone to stand up. Mm. And if you look at the past two years, I think the first eight games for 2021 and 22, Corey didn't play. Mm. And we still didn't lose those ones. True. So it just made the other guys stand Good up. Good mark. Corey Beard again. Take a bit more onus on themselves. Mm. And even a few of them talked about that when Corey came back, they took a backward step. Mm. So, what, even Zach and those guys. Mm -hmm. mm. So I think they're, they're even looking forward to having a... Yeah, Boyd West Chance here. Chance to stand up. Mm. And Price is growing. He played a bit of EP footy this year, so. Right. So, Brock Davis and Price Marshall working together. A couple of young kids, and Zach Calderwood has come in and steady the ship. Zach again. Young Jai Mullins here running out the boundary. And he's such an attacking defender. Yeah, he just runs. <laughs> I haven't heard much about him, but has been absolutely... He tries yeah. to sneak his way forward a fair bit, actually. Oh, mm. Zach. You, sometimes you're like, what the hell are you doing down here? Mm -hmm. He kicked one goal this year. It might have been his first in a long time. And Enjoyed it? Yeah, and the whole bloody back line got around him. I think they have a bet, usually, if he can... Mm. Whoever uh, out of the back line kick a goal on the day, the rest of the back line owe him a beer, mm -hmm. I think. But the thing about him, is that Zach, is that uh, whenever he get, gets the ball, his head immediately goes... Yeah, yeah. And Zach Mullins lined up for his second goal and puts it through. So probably not the prettiest footy we've seen today, but just uh, just grit and determination, getting the ball to the forward line and another goal. So 5-7-37, Tasman's to Marvel Range 16-15-111. He's been around, he's been there his whole life. I don't think he's played anywhere else. He might have spent one year in Adelaide at uni, but I'm not sure if he even played over there. I'm not sure how long he stayed in Adelaide for. Mm -hmm. But yeah, he's been around as long as I have. Well, there was, we were 7-9 at half time to their 3-2. And then we picked up. Oh, another good grab by Zach Calderwood. Zach Calderwood can play. Can play. Yeah, he's insane actually. He's getting up there with the age, but. <laughs> but the way he just puts himself in the right place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's been doing it for like the past, oh, I don't know how many years, 10, 15 years, mm. been doing the same thing. Did you take the time when the quarter started? No. No, I'm not sure how much, so it can't be much time left. So another tap, one by Jed Wolf. That's dropping the ball. <laughs> 
Is that Good cold crap. or The elder level. That that kid gets nosebleed sometimes. He gets that up that high. <laughs> He's a guy, he's a terrific reader, reader of the play, isn't he? Yeah, he's a good reader of the play. Sometimes he's kicking, letting down. But... On the curves and sales and service scoreboard, mate, this is going to go down to the wire. We played 16 minutes in the final term. Way back's back with Krollig. the football. Krollig now comes away to the right wing position. He bombs away into the contest. Oh, Hinges. oh Sam Hinges, good mark. Great grab, Sam Hinges. Really doing the big job there. They they still look to slow it down though. Way backs, they're going to get themselves in trouble. And now Marble Range, they want to play on quickly. Cool to play on. Doesn't mind the pressure. Oh, yeah. but look at that. Oh, Marble Range are really coming up with the goods here under pressure. And wasn't that just a crucial moment? Oh yeah. Xavier Watson does well to spoil. Wayback's back with it. If they can get the next Because one. obviously Wayback's kick a goal there and they are a goal and a bit. There, yeah, it's nearly icy. Boundary umpire will I think he's gonna throw yeah. it in. But he the way he reads the, the play is great. Yeah. Just like great defenders do. He's just drifts around and he's always in the yeah. the front spot. Yeah. And they work really well back those back six together. Mm -hmm. uh, Who are? It was in that year, it was, we had Ned, we had Zach, you had Corey, you had Wade Hanson. Ooh, who were the other two? Oh, Price was back there and Brocky Davis and then Brock was swapping off the bench with someone else that eludes me at the minute. Get into time one, there's only probably a couple of minutes to go. Boundary umpire throws it in, tap down one by no one, Hind just at the second attempt and they come away with it way back. Way back, get her on the boot. Oh, Marble Range desperately hanging on in defence. Come away with Price Marshall. Marshall, jinx the man on the Yeah, way back's had a pretty good team at that stage. They did. Well, obviously, you've got to Jonty in there. And... It's risky kick. Schreiber tries to work him off it. Montgomery's got some work to do. West will look up, and he's got one person to oh, kick to, and that's Bias, and he finds him. So, and he plays on, and he's going to kick his Has second. a kick, and, yeah, straight through the middle. He's, so, he obviously didn't enjoy playing B-grade last week, and uh, he definitely doesn't want to be there again. He's on track for eight at the moment. I wonder if that'll be enough to retain his spot. But... <laughs> he can only hope. Yeah, COVID year. The COVID year where I reckon Waybacks went into that pretty confident they had it yeah, stitched yeah. up. And uh, we were probably midfield, midfield. We started real slow. I think we were one and six. Yeah. Well, we should have won this one, but we lost this one. I think this is reasonably early in the year. And um, I'm pretty sure we're one and six in the last three or four games. We, won, we beat everyone on the way into finals. And then we won the first final and lost the prelim, didn't we? Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, and I think what they Xavier Watson in the midfield and Hinges and Yeah. Because this is the COVID year, isn't it? That is. Marble Range probably gave up a similar margin last week. I'm not sure what was was it six goals at Half time, but it was it was uh, field goal. That, and I'll tell you what, he is good, isn't he? He's uh, like we said, he's uh, he's big and strong, and he's pretty quick as well. Skills are there, so he's he is quite the complete package. Yeah, he's a brilliant player. He went up to Beard and and told him told him how good he was. <laughs> I'm not sure he's picked the best person to do that to, but he's uh, he's definitely very very good, Jonty Seal. Yeah, he doesn't lack self-confidence, John. This year, I think you had even one or two blokes who had played Mortlock playing B-grade, I think, this particular yeah, day. I'll get to that in no time. <laughs> <laughs> What's it, Oh, good, good grab. Now, they have to... Been asked to commentate the last five minutes of this game, so... No, nah, all good. All right, so they've made some space, but there's just wavebacks everywhere. It's not what you like to look at. Blaze K, he's not fast, but he's found the right spot. Blaze. <laughs> Holy shit. In the big grade. The white wombat. <laughs> Get it going. Put his play on now. He needs to move. Oh, and he's found. Is that Leonard Laurie? Long down the line. Leonard doesn't muck around. He knows how to win a game. Oh, we had like Ali Jonkot. We had Hippie Wanganine. We had... Uh, oh, you had Hippie out there? Yeah, we had Hippie for a bit. <laughs> he's a bit of a legend. Yeah, he's funny. I taught him at school. Really? Uh, yeah. yeah, he's a good character, Hippie. Mm.
You would have played a bit of Mortlock with Hippie, probably. Yeah, yeah, he's played a, a fair bit down the full forward or hip. Mm. Lincoln City just have to win this. To win the Mortlock Shield in 2021. Can they do it? Doesn't look likely at the moment. It's not with Lincoln Districts in this sort of form. This bloke can really play, he's had a great carnival. He doesn't look like a footballer, but he is. Then we had Casey Amos there as well. Mm -hmm. Mel Miller, so. Tries to work it around the corner, but cut off by... Looks like Casey Amos. Casey Amos, and yeah. they work back to Haskett, so... But obviously you're way back, so, you know, they're all over you here. Yeah. They uh, had a fair old run on. Um, I don't think we scored for a long period of time there. Because mm. I think they actually uh, came at you late and got in front in this game, I reckon. Yeah. But you dealt with it better. He can watch it back and make his own mind up. So Jackson Bennett running out of defence here. Great left foot. Kicks to Cole Cassidy, who brings the ball down. Strap. Handballs to Jace Morgan, the ruckman. Nice big kick, a little bit too high yeah, for young Billy. Too many way backs. It was nice that I'd accidentally, because I really only came over when I was able to. It was yeah. Nice that I accidentally captured this particular yeah. key rivalry between these two clubs, which are really vying for premierships at this particular point in time. Yeah, we were. This was a great rivalry this year. Well done, Boyd. I reckon. Stop, Will. Yes, 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 yes. Well done, Westy. And Westy's took the goal. Punt straight through the middle. Uh, good work, Boyd West. Tackle. Just uh, relentlessly pushing the ball forward. It's paying off for Rangers. At the yeah, they needed that one, though, didn't they? Probably getting beaten by, with skill around the ground, but. And saying about that, dealt with it better. Like, we just have the ability now, don't we? Like, we have that ability to, and the belief to deal with teams who get close like yeah, well, I think used to be we used to be like have that fear of failure yeah beliefs that, crumble beliefs the right word that when we lose three or four prelims in a row when probably all of them we had a chance we're in, in a position oh, to win 100% we just didn't know how to and that's yeah you, you had the cattle pre 2020 yeah, yeah. just yeah. just yeah. fell over in those games that you were four or five goals up in the last quarter going yeah. the last quarter and, and lost you didn't have that belief yeah. now you can be in a position where you're down by a couple yeah and they've, they've yeah you know we, we got this like everyone looks so, at each other around and goes yeah yep. completely yeah. different mindset i remember three quarter time of the 2021 grand final everyone in the crowd would have thought we were gone but i think the whole playing group we looked at each other and we we're like we knew that we were going to find a way to win yep yep well you turned it around yeah point Come on, Rangers, please, please, please. The first match last year, we played way back out here and they picked us and roast. No! So that goal's got way backs in front, I believe. Mm, I reckon it will. 10, 10, 70 to 10, 11, 71, I think it is. Come on, Rangers, your goal next. Please, Rangers. Please, please, please. Yeah, they're a point up. Uh, Jace Morgan to the right. We're going to have to give our boys first use, so you'd expect it to go straight down to Lockie Jennings. That's where it's been each other t every time. And hanging and on. And they're hanging there. on to our players. <laughs> so way back to be trying to hold everything How up. How much time you reckon, boys? Ten minutes? Well, they've been holding our players. Yep, eight.
No, Jason Moore was Oh, that's the, what you needed. Pulled a free kick out. Yeah. A little bit of luck in that one. Get to somebody. Yep. Hot, hot! Great, great kick by Strat. Taking risks. Because you'd rather lose by two goals than one point. Oh, no! And just giving it a crack. Mm hmm. Brock makes a good point there. We probably didn't know how to do that in the past. If we, was, nah. if we were down by two goals, we were still were timid in trying to score. Whereas when we now we're down by two goals, we're just um, just going for it. We're just taking risks and Everyone doesn't it doesn't work. It doesn't work. Has, has the awareness, don't they? Like, yeah. It's like, right, we need to go down the corridor and go bang. Yeah. Score as quickly as possible. Green time. But yeah, it's always nice playing and you got the support of Bandy's Bar there. And they're all usually Marble Range. Yeah! And at this stage, they're usually all tipsy. Gonna <laughs> 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 bounce it up. No, 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 that's hold, that's a hold throw. Free kick. Billy Boss will oh, take Oh my it. goodness. Oh, good. And I'd say, I'm, I usually think Billy's got a pretty safe foot on him. So we'll see what he can do with this one. Billy lining up, has a shot, looks pretty good and he's happy with it. Straight through the middle. Couple more errors like that, Brian. <laughs> Was this the first time you'd worn the Heritage Jumper? I think well, 2021's the first time we had it. Hmm. It's good you've gone back to the... Yeah, the well, the players love the Heritage one. Hmm. Um, I, don't know, I suppose it signifies a new era as well. A little bit with us. Yeah, it just seemed to work. Like, seeing a big flock of black mm. Guernseys, I think, is more intimidating than mm. white Guernseys. But and historically, it's... Yeah. It's, it's your Guernsey. It, it's how it was, so... Yeah. Seeing that we've got the, the white V jumper back again, that was, the, that was the jumper that I associated Marble Range when okay. I was a kid. Yep. Because that's the yes. jumper that we used. Yep. Until we change to this sash arrangement. Yep. It's good for the air. Shows marble range, 3 4 22, leading Tasman's one behind as we tick over to one minute gone on the Ace Merchandise and Apparel Time Clock in the second quarter. And the kick in missed everybody as it fell to Josh Slade at the back. Goes short to Guy Hutchinson, umpire calling play on. They're going to hand pass this down this left wing, onto the left boot. It's a bit of a slice kick, helicopter kick. Beat everybody over the top. Wolford tries to get there first. He's beaten to it by Tasman's. Hand pass in, and now it's away from Charlton, kicking into the centre. They're just doing this so well. Marble range. It's a bit of an up and under from Jackson Bennett. He got under that one, but the mark is taken by Lachlan Strap. Jennings. And Jennings will line up. Just slightly off centre to the right, but still very, very kick. Man, he loves a shot at goal. Man, he loves the camera. Oh, the thing to do with the camera is getting close. Yep. Lachlan Jennings makes no mistake from pretty much bang in front. Because there is that bit of footage that Lance Puckridge filmed of uh, Marble Rangers very first season yeah. in Port Lincoln wearing that jumper. Yeah. I think we were red and white when we first come in. No. Maybe not. No, they're, they're playing against Tasman's. Yeah, because I think initially before even like Possibly before that. The before the war when we got we got kicked out, I think we were red and white and then we come back in and then Tasman's had red and white, so then we had to go to black and white. Because Tasman's only started in 46. Yeah. Did you see that, that application of the Lake Wongri Football Club out of the Lincoln Times? So there's now four teams in the association when Marble Range joined. Yes. Before mate. that, it wasn't four. Yeah. Mm. They call it the Lake Wongri Football Club in here. I don't know if that's actually what it was called, but so that's when. So that would have been thirty-eight. Yeah. When we started down there. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Joined the association. That's right. Oh, there's that cry. So, jo oh, Jed Wolford, great tap to Chow. Kicks it down to. Kyle Castle, who gets onto his left pretty easily there. Up, Weston. Um, 
Uh, caught out of position there, Boyd West. Gave away a free kick. Great closing speed by the big man, Jed Wolford. No, way back to marking well there. Over that side. Whoa! Oh, that young Kobe Sampson is just hard, isn't he? He just went in full. Hit the ball hard. Yep, and he went on and he's Jordy Clements. through that. Pretty clean, and he just pushes the ball Name Family names at Marble Range that are, you know, just legends. The Charltons and Sampsons and Puckridges and, you know, um, Dowdles. Um. Well, you see, those players that were playing at Mount Hope, like a lot of them came down and played with us. Yeah. So had Mount Hope finished then? Mm. That's right, because they, were in, they played. Because all the good players came down here. And they actually, some of them played in way back yeah. in the B grade to start with too, didn't they? Oh, right. That's right. Because in that B grade side, there's Mount Hope people in there, I reckon. Club disband, Mount Hope club disbanded in 1940, and members joined Kapini and Marble Range. And they, they've got oh, the, right. um So they, they were in the 40-41 Premiership teams, those Mount Hope boys. Yeah. Yep. Mm. Mm. Tom Marnie. Tom and Slim. Tom and yeah. Slim. So I wonder what year, must Billy have been Parsons. the late 50s, uh, the late 30s when Dad and Wally, because there's a photo of... Them in Waybacks? Yeah. Waybacks have only got themselves to blame for the position they're in now. They should have wrapped this game up a lot earlier. They kicked a lot of points in a row earlier in the game. They're doing exactly the same thing now. They've kicked one goal, six this quarter. That's Ken McKenzie. Coming back into it a little more, more now is uh, his Waybacks. Of course, that wind sprung up in the last 10 minutes in particular. The flag's down there. Straight really out. blowing straight hard towards the, the Marble Range end, so he's got to kick into a strong wind. McKenzie kicks it Good kick, up. though. Right up toward the four line. Farga up there. No one can handle it. Mickey Bilney. Bilney, Bilney coming through. Couldn't get it. To... Oh, he was off that player. An umpire called uh, play on. And an oh, the point through. Level. It's rushed. I haven't been putting uh, the ten. The score was 10:21, 81 to 11:15, 81. It's a bad thing if they are wrong. This it certainly is. Puckridge. Puckridge getting through there once again for Marble Range. Flicks Marble Range getting right in there. So too is Waybacks. On that centre wing position. Out towards Bilney. Bilney couldn't pick it up. They're coming through Waybacks once again. Tregenza gets O'Connell. it across. O'Connell flicks David another Porter hand across, and across to Summerton. And Summerton will centre down there. Can Summerton make forward. the distance? And can he kick straight? Well, he can kick straight in the field, Keith. It's just a matter of whether he can... Those big white posts are looking at you. We yes. all turn to water at Kicks times. Kicks a lot of goals on the run, Glenn. In the times that I've seen him play Glenn football. Glenn Summerton, centre half. set shot, he's not quite so sure. There it is. There's the kick, and it looks good from here. That is a goal. It's right through the middle. Good goal to Glenn Summerton. Puts uh, way back six goals, six behind in front. 11.21 to 11.15. I've got, I've got a couple of um, photos of the... They were negatives too from after the 78 grand final, couple inside the rooms oh, and yeah, then a yeah. couple for the breakfast the next day. Yep. We had, bre yeah, we had breakfast with Waybacks. Yeah. Lincoln Hotel. Yes. Yeah, so you just put them up, I reckon. Yeah, I did. I, I found the negatives when I was searching through the other day. Luckily, Mum's got some of them named because I don't know, I've got hundreds of envelopes full of hundreds of negatives. Over into the centre of the ground by Marble Range now. Price in the race for the ball. Short kick now over to centre wing. Here's a chance now. McLaughlin it is again. Steve McLaughlin into the centre of the ground. Square oh, pass is right. And that uh, looks a good one. Free kick. Free kick was picked up by uh, umpire Samara. I was watching the ball. I reckon he done one on the free kick given there. That was the goal umpire because I tell you what, he was really amazed. I don't think he knew what he would have had to do there, Keith. Would you? <laughs> no, the interference was much the same as that uh, he gave before, but uh, it was definitely it's he played the free kick. No, I well, thought it was all right, but. Well, it's all right, Keith. Tap away by Farga from the throw in. Now it's a handball over to uh, Pedler. Pedler uh, again over to, uh, to Price, it is, I think. He can't right. pick it up. Now it's Cherini. Cherini on his left boot. In uh, to. Uh, uh, this looks a good one. That's straight through the big sticks. That's. Uh, the front, uh, Jack Morgan. Morgan's a kick to the goal, but uh, that one's a 
Sam wobbled a little bit too, and uh, I reckon his captain coach might have been a bit hot on him if that hadn't have gone through, because he certainly should have settled down and had a, a, a more casual kick at goal off of a free kick. That's Marble Rangers' fourth goal in the second turn. Now they go to five goals for uh, leading waybacks. Now they'll kick the front. Four goals, four to waybacks. That's the first time we've seen the Magpies in front today. Oh, there you go. It's Pete, that's free, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Lord. And then tension and excitement was intense in the huge crowd and people far and near, Great Flinders, Billy Giles, Ian, Ma Ian Marnie? Tom Marnie. Tom. Can't read her writing. Um, Tumby Bay and Wyala as Marble Range ran onto the oval through the cheer squad and a barrage of streamers. And we've got photos of that from Dad. Um, and a deafening roar. It was evident which was the popular team. <laughs> Way back so only their supporters. <laughs> uh, despite the wind, the match was a thriller and a test alike of lungs and nerves right to the very end. It was a great team effort by Marble Range. Right in front of the grandstand, over to Porter. Porter onto his left boot. So there's uh, three magpies, it bounces wrong. Now it's Bildy. Bildy with a short kick, but just bounces in front of the uh, boundary line for another throw in, in front of the, uh, the big crowd here today at uh, Port Lincoln. Throw in now. O'Connell takes the ball out of the air, but uh, kicks straight up to, uh, to find an opponent at an half. Started with Ainsbury and Carlson as 19th and 20th, and I think had our best possible team. Hully did many clever things, as did Alan Price. Throw in now, right on centre wing. We see O'Connell and Puckridge doing battle again, but little Chirini sharks the ball uh, from the throw in, kicks uh, awkwardly up onto the half forward flank, but it's uh, a way back player clearing a big long kick back, back sure. right into the centre of the ground. Ball shark well there by uh, uh, a player in Hull, Wayne Hull. Oh, the good mark there, good mark by Jeff Edwards. Another quick pass over into the centre half forward region, finds Alan Price. Alan Price takes a mark in the uh, centre half forward. He's, uh, Price and Hull, they're two of the players that Marble Range need to fire in the uh, in the latter uh, or the, the second half of this grand final today. It's a long way out, Laurie. A long, long way out from goal. It'd be a brilliant kick to get that one. But look at the boot. That is a magnificent kick of goal straight through the big sticks, and that could be one of the big goals that decide this grand final here at Port Lincoln today. Peter Rucked valiantly. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, I must have paid her to put that in there. <laughs> Nearly the entire match, especially amazing effort in the vital third quarter. I said that she was slightly biased. There's the hit away by Puckridge, gathered by Farga, intercepted there again. And it's McLaughlin out in the lead for the ball, but it's gathered in nicely by Burke. Burke disposes of the ball and holding the ball rule against Burke and the goes to the agency of Porter. 15 metre penalty too, given... Uh, against Gahardi or Burke it was, one of those two, and it's going now for Porter. Porter now with the kick, two centre-half forward. It's got wide hit under the drop and all oh, a big fly by Turner, couldn't mark it, picked up by Hull. Hull's coming into it uh, as Kevin Ailiff said a moment ago. Strong clash of players there, Storitsky and uh, who's that player down there? Chirini. Chirini it is. Good solid player, Chirini, and he met solidly with Storitsky in somewhat of an accidental type clash. He's in all sorts of trouble and the freak, the kick's going to be taken by Gahardi. Left foot kick, not a good one. Found the arms of, of um, McFarlane. McFarlane now, quick to play on, realising their advantage into the breeze. Hegarty in front, oh, Edwards over the back and almost took the mark. The umpires played it and I agree with that one. He certainly had grip of the ball, brought it to the ground. A good mark by Edwards and two strong marks in this quarter in the last five minutes has given an advantage to um, to his son. But do you write with your prediction there, Kevin? He uh, He's a focal point at centre-half forward and, and when he's firing, the magpies look real good. It's Marble Rains players are playing with a lot more uh, precision now. They're looking for their men and they're backing each other up well and they're, they're looking good. Let's wait for the decision. That's just through the middle there. The umpire moved quickly across to his left, but uh, through the middle as the crowd comes to life here now. And, uh, 
black and white manners being waved around the fence. No doubt Marble Range have got all their supporters here today and uh, Marble Range haven't played in the grand final before, have they, Kev? I think they, uh, I think they have, John, but it's uh, probably well before my time, yes. but I don't think they've been able to notch a winner as yet. Right, thanks, Kevin. Kevin Aylor. From fifth position uh, last year, uh, they missed out on the four uh, in uh, in 77, so they're, they're really pulling out all stops to uh, to make this one a winner today. That's a big advantage to Marble Range at this point of time in the third term, and that's the this is the part of the third term that they uh, really need to give Waybacks a real jag along there, and Waybacks now looking down the barrel. Knock away. Things are flying high for Marble Range. Huckridge bumped forward. Knocked off the ball was Burke. Scrimmage are playing there, and uh, things are getting a little bit tired as uh, Wayback realise now they have to put their head and shoulders over the situation and make sure they get in for the hard ball. There's the big hit away again by Puckridge, gathered by Porter, snapped back into the centre of the ground. A good timely mark taken by uh, F. Puckridge. Freeman Puckridge it is, with a left foot kick up the half forward. Good mark there, taken by Morgan. Morgan left half forward flank, quick to get the ball into attack. Hegarty seems to be the man in position. Get over the back again, Edwards, play on a good decision by the umpire. That came off Hegarty's hands, and that's a better mark. Uh, Dave Sargent, in his return to A grade, made some superb saves. Though in the paper, these are attributed to Neville Parker. Jeff Edwards had brilliant moments. Young Parker on the wing, fully justified oh, Freeman's fate. Fully comfortably up into the, into the breeze. Well hit away there and down into the arms of Porter. Porter for way back. Out wide, in front, the good mark taken there by Parker. That young Parker's played a good game on his wing today. He really has. And Freeman, after he settled down, cut Whitehead out of the game. <laughs> <laughs> after he settled down, he must have been a bit hot. Yeah, I must have been getting a hiding early on. <laughs> in it again is Brougham. Gathered the ball in, chipped a pass across, looking for McLeod, but a good mark taken there by Puckridge. He's been a good player for Marble Range all day at centre-half, but came, in, came into the game strongly in the uh, early part of the second half. He kicks right up to centre wing, nearly a good mark there to the uh, Magpie player, not paid by the umpire. But a free kick now picked out, and it's a uh, player in the form of... Just can't quite pick him up. Parker, looks like Parker, young Parker it is. He kicks up over the uh, centre of the ground. Under the drop of the ball is uh, two way back players spoil each other. Now a chance. Oh, look to be a strong market. Played by our player Sembler. Duck McFarland it is. Big Duck McFarland about 40 metres out directly in front. And this uh, kick, if it's online, will put the Magpies back in front as we get to about the five, six minute mark of the final term at Centenary Oval. What's his normal kicking ability? I've watched him several times. No. I've watched him today and he hasn't kicked all that well, um, Kev. I just wondered what he, what he normally kicks. Okay, he kick one. There's the kick by McFarlane. That's hole held up into the breeze. If it travels the distance, straight through the middle. And a good recovery goal by Marble Range. To give them the goal advantage back again. Joe Dufek was left a loose man for one quarter while way back stacked their back lines. Really got up steam and ran out for the rest of the match. Hey, Dufek, good year? Yeah, top year. Yeah. Pleased with the fellas. Everyone play well. Top year. Great. Year. John Morgan, Peter Gahardi. Yep. Yep. Um, State Bank. Yep. Sharini, Brenton, Captain's Game. Name them all and they did their bit. Could see it especially by the replay. Has it now, Ian balls across to Storitsky. Storitsky uh, moving around, doing a little too much. Could have been holding the ball. The play on for the umpire. It's in the favour of Martin Carlson. Ray through Carlson. Carlson's kicking out the man on the lead. They can't do anything wrong. They've been red hot in this final term and they've really played well in the latter half of this game to, to uh, show a uh, clean pair of heels to Waybacks in the second half. And uh, every answer that Waybacks has been able to bring back to them, Marble Rage have answered back strongly again. Little Grant Parker playing Parker for the game. future in front of him. He's only a Colts player. Big kick by Parker into the forward area. It's gathered in by a heap of players on the ground there. And uh, for, Packridge it is under the sp scrimmage of play. Very happy to keep the ball down in that attacking area. Must be only a minute or so to play. We're all right in the final term, time of the game. Gathered by O'Connell. O'Connell's kick into a scrimmage of players. So and Marble Range run out winners of the 1978 Grand Final. 11 goals, 8, 7-1.
74 behind, the way back 9 goal side, 63 behind. Our camera will stay with you for a moment. We'll have a look at the players out on the ground. We'll take the opportunity to thank Keith Stacey for being with us today. Molly Wilkes. As we watch players coming out there. Joe, you're in charge, I think. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Good idea. Got four microphones, so I don't get one. So yeah. <laughs> Only until, you know, these boys take over. Here with Andrew Serena, the old campaigner from Marble Range, uh, played in the 1978 Grand Final. How do you feel, Andy? Uh, hasn't quite sunk in yet, but I feel fantastic. Had a couple of good leads today and some passes came in and uh, played very well, I thought. In fact, the club thought so. An issue with $100, best player award. How do you feel about that? Uh, very happy about accepting the $100, but all the lads played well up forward and they, uh, they looked for me today and it made my job easier because everyone played well. The whole centre line played well. It makes a half forward. It's going very easy. Hotly pursued by Wayne Hull from Marble Range. Hull comes out with the ball. He's tackled well from a Nully Park player there. And uh, a player from Nully Park in Miller, I think it is, has been tackled. No, no, Joey Dufek from Marble Range has, has come out with a free kick there. He drives the ball forward, looking for Luke William on the wing. Finds that player from Marble Range. He likes to go along with the drop punt, looking for Shirini from Marble Range. Shirini in front, takes a good mark on his own. Unopposed on that occasion, Shirini, and he doesn't miss them unopposed, that's for sure. He goes forward and finds Alton Dewitt. Alton Dewitt in, in the pocket. He plays on quickly, looking for Marble Range. Captain coach once again in Graham Jackson. And uh, Graham Jackson, once again, well within kicking distance. Very slight angle. Yes, yeah, good play by Marble Range. I like the way uh, young Dewitt got out in front there on that occasion and chipped it away when he saw uh, Jackson with, with the opportunity. And, uh, Look at that kick, uh, Pip. That's a beautiful uh, kick by the captain coach of Marble Range. With me now is an obviously jubilant, jubilant uh, captain coach of Marble Range in Graham Jackson. Graham, it's been a fantastic year for you, not only uh, winning the male medal in the Port Lincoln Football League, but here today uh, taking the side top and um, chipping in yourself for coming back from injury and chipping in with three great goals. How do you feel? Oh, very, very pleased, thanks, Peter. Um, I think in the long term it was our more experienced players that, that uh, held sway. We had um, fellas like Freeman Puckridge and um, Jeff Edwards and Neil Laxton. They seem to come into their own in the later stages of today's game. And he'll have another one of his many kicks and uh, he finds Brenton Parsons on a long lead on the half forward flank from Marble Range. Plays on quickly, comes across towards the centre of the ground. Jenky fails to take the mark from a small by Pickett. Uh, but it's Laxton finally comes out of the ball, taps the ball forward in the direction of Jackson. And Jackson looks good from here. Looks very good from here. Yes, a fine goal to Marble Range there. Graham Jackson chipped in there with a good passage to play by Neil Laxton. He chips in to kick a goal for Marble Range, bringing it up to six goals four, leading Mallee Park four goals six. And just the inexperience of the, uh, the, Marble, uh, the Mallee Parks just, just tilt, tilt in the long term. One of those days, uh, up until about five minutes ago, we wouldn't know whether who was going to win because uh, them, those fellas can kick, ten, kick three or four goals in a matter of three minutes. And, you know, I was never happy to see the siren go at the right time. Great comment. Uh, drink a bit of piss tonight, you reckon? Yes, I'll have a couple of co-op beers and uh, <laughs> followed by a couple of loud ones. What about laugh? Laugh? <laughs> what about Jacko? Pretty good coach? Magic. The best, I reckon. Well, best I've ever played under, I reckon. Who was your best player today? Neil Lexton. Top game. Great, great ever, eh? Magic. And uh, here's the handball out to Stengles. Stengles dummies past a couple of players and uh, kicks across the face of Graham. Young Graham Parker for Marble Range takes a fine and, and also a telling mark for Marble Range at this stage on the hard back line. He lets to come out towards the wing position where he finds Neil Laxton. What about yourself? Buddy? <laughs> nice little hello to the camera there. Buddy, good game today. Who was your best player today? Well, I thought Neil Laxton played a pretty good game in Jeddah. Uh, a great effort. Who was your best player today, you reckon? I think Neil Laxton. I'm always, you know, Neil and I started here at the same time and uh, a lot of times people don't realise the work he does and um, I think he played very, very well.
he, he does a short kick, but uh, Neil Laxton it is. Neil Laxton's picking up quite a few kicks for Marble Range at this yes, stage. He plays on quickly, back. comes across towards the wing. Trent Gregory, another good player for Marble Range. Played a great game on the win today. Um, how do you reckon you fared against your opposition? Uh, well, Harry Peel got shifted off me to counteract Joe Dufek on the uh, other side early in the game, and uh, from then on I had a free run and uh, got a few kicks. Marble Range. Kicks it out wide, it's a beautiful looking kick and um, it's found Laxton out in the far wing. He's immediately onto the left leg, chips away and uh, Jufek I think it is, Jack Jufek has taken the ball at half forward. He uh, directs play right across to the centre of the ground, didn't gain any meterage at all but Wayne Hull now with a very damaging Wayne Hull, uh, as we see there, kicking the ball out in front of the Quilliam and uh, another valuable touch to Quilliam. Parsons here now uh, unable to get around his opponent, Dufek brought down, scramble going on, Marble Range have lost possession there but Hull, Hull again over to Dorwood, Dorwood under pressure, the handball out wide, misses Dufek, Hill goes down, bit of body weight, Jenky the handball out to Dufek, quickly onto the boot, but, uh, it's hit the post, there's a, a fine opportunity for Marble Range but he's hit the post, and they are now three goals to 20 behinds, Mallee Park two goals three, 15 behinds. We're a complete unit now, and uh, we've got a strong centre line. We're strong all over the ground. And comes across the woods, the centre of the ground, where he finds Laxton. Laxton comes yeah, across up. once again, yeah, looking up forward for Jenky, and Jenky's taking a good mark. And it's a great club to play with. Greg Jenky, centre forward. Uh, what do you think about the day, Greg? Not a bad effort? Uh, yeah, um, I've been uh, waiting a long time for this. Uh, I've been in, uh, this is the sixth grand final. I'm pretty damn pleased to be in it. Youngest player on the side today. What's it feel like 1982? Magic. Magic win. Magic year. And uh, Mally Park runs out with the ball uh, across to um, Mally Park player there and comes out and to uh, uh, Catenary. Catenary comes across towards the centre of the ground where Harry Peel takes a good mark in, in front of the pack. He plays on quickly with the left foot up towards Gray. Gray takes the mark on the wing position for Mallee Park. Lester goes towards the centre of the ground with a lead from Richards, but behind is Hughes, and uh, Hughes takes a timely mark for Marble Range. And time's ticking away here at the 20-minute mark of the last quarter. Hughes elects to go across towards the wing, finds Dorwood in that wing position. Dorwood's had a lot of kicks this quarter. He lets it come across towards the centre of the ground. Took a lot of heavy, heavy knocks today. How's your head now? Doesn't matter, doesn't matter, mate. Be here tonight, we'll be all right. Yep. Sock a few down, you reckon? Yeah, yeah, we're we'll knocking down. Thank you, boys. Yeah, great. Good win. Two campaigners from the 78 grand final, President Brian Foster and uh, the current runner of the club, Jack Morgan. What do you reckon, Foster? Spot on, boy. Spot on. Great win. Good for the club. Great. Oh, great. It was a great team effort. Really proud of the boys. Unreal. A grassroots win. Um, I can see Joe Morgan just over there. We might be able to try and catch her, but she's, she's running away. What do you reckon about that, Joan? Shit up, boy. Beautiful. <laughs> no, we're really proud of the boys. Uh, they told us Thursday night that if we put on a good tee for them, that they would do it, and they didn't let us down. We're really thrilled. I haven't got many more years, you know, watching premierships, and I'm glad that they won them this one. Should I want it? <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Reckon about 1982, Shep? I reckon it's fabulous, fabulous year. <laughs> well, we've worked hard all year for the boys, and they've brought it home for us, and that's what we wanted. We don't mind working hard. Done a lot of hard work, that's for sure, on Thursday nights of training. That. I think all the boys were pretty wrapped in it. Yes, Joan and Gwen and all the girls done a marvellous job Thursday nights, Tuesday nights, and Saturday nights, all the other players' wives and that, they've done a marvellous job, and I reckon it's worthwhile, all that work. Oh, it was really good actually. I felt really proud just to be out there and it was really worthwhile. We all yelled all day and just cheered and sang and everything else and it, was, it just seemed really worthwhile. I felt really proud to be in the cheer squad actually. Blowing it up. Two Herbie Classes of players here, but he lets it go short. Shock. And uh, Freeman Puckers chips in for Marble Range and um, he, he clears for Marble Range out towards, clears up towards the half forward line. And uh, Dorwood, we go across to Peter Parker's here. Bit of a disappointing year for Peter, did his knee in early. But uh, he'd be a very happy man at this stage, team manager and all. Yeah, very happy, Pep. Good effort by the boys, and uh, I think we might drink a bit of piss tonight. <laughs> Thanks, Pete. Great, mate. Do you want me to read it out or not? Yeah, read it. All right, so starts off with motto of the Rangers. 
play it hard, keep it clean. That was 90, this is written in 1994. When the Old Marble Range Football Association, consisting of Wongri, Coulter and Ida Lilly disbanded in 1936, a group of largely inexperienced young players from Wongri and Coulter joined the Wayback B grade side, were made welcome and constituted a large part of the team which went through the season undefeated. There were other young players who had not been able to get a game. At the end of the year, all players decided that together they might become acceptable to Port Lincoln as a club in its own right. Optimistically, they called for an open meeting on the possibilities in the Wongri Hall. Fortunately, enough experienced and interested men attended and were prepared to accept authority to run and manage the new club formed. Port Lincoln Association accepted after receiving assurance that the request was valid and responsible and the new club became the Marble Range Club, taking its name from the defunct association. In the period up to the Port Lincoln Football Association going into recess because of World War II, the club enjoyed four seasons, winning A-grade premierships in the last two. As well, they may have created a precedent of sorts by winning a semi-final with only 17 available players from beginning to end. After the war, application to rejoin with Port Lincoln was rejected and it wasn't until 1953 that Marble Range was at last welcomed back into what by now had become the Port Lincoln Football League. I didn't realise that. Did you know that? Yeah. Um, it took time to rebuild from scratch and as a condition acceptable to both club and league, it was required that the Rangers should only play B grade until they had won a B grade premiership. They did that in their third year. Since then, the club has marched with its fellow clubs as fresh grades and colts have been created. It's particularly proud of how each grade still upholds the Ranger motto, play it hard, keep it clean. Um, over the years, the club has had many players amongst its ranks and the following have won the male medal. T. Marnie, I think. Tom. 19, yep. yep, 1940. G. Charlton, 61, 62, 64 and 65. Wayne Hull in 72, G Jackson in 82 and Yaron Kurovic in 87. Senior grade premierships have been hard to come by but grand finals flags were won in 1940, 41, 78 and 82 by the A grade and in 56, 89 and 91 by the reserves. There you go. Proud of its Colts administration, always tried to create a positive and fair atmosphere for young footballers under 17 grand finals were won in 1983, 88, 89 and 93. So all our five boys, all our five boys come up through the ranks. And now the grandkids. And now the grandkids and now the great grandkids. So we were there, well, James Ross and, and a lot of uh, older identities out at Marble Range were getting the Colts going. And um, we came along with five boys. Mm. Do you know what? My dad was a way backer. Yeah, okay. Yeah, actually, I did, I did know that. And Graham Charlton was a way backer. Yeah. And he came to Marble Range when they started up again. Yeah. And that's how we came to be out at Marble Range. Um, he said to Kevin, Kevin went and watched Tasman's while he played for South. Yeah. He went to Waybacks, he went to South, he went to Tasman's. Yeah. No one asked him to join them. Yeah, okay. And Graham said, Bit of a mistake. The Marble Range, come and play with Uncle Graham. Regret that yeah. now, I reckon. <coughs> so that's how we came to be a, a Marble Ranger. Yeah, good. Oh, Beth. Of course, you lost Wally yesterday. Yeah, lost Wally yesterday. So mm. it's sad for the family and the club and the broader community as well. He's a good man, Wally. Great innings. Yeah, even after the. This year's grand final, I remember all us boys going over to mm. their car specifically um, to catch up with Wally and Beth. Here we go. This will be a ball up here. Marble Range in attack. 25 minutes gone in the final term. It's Marble Range by three on the Curtis of Sales and Service scoreboard. Hind just wins the tap out. But there's two. There it is. Marble Range win the 2021 Port Lincoln Football League grand final. What a, what a win. What a game. Yeah, he's been there for a long time, my Wally. Mm. And Beth. 
or his name on the on the fence and yeah yeah he's a great man yeah yeah for sure with his car park there at Wongri. yeah and he's a little rap four So it was a pleasure to have five boys playing for Marble Range. And uh, they played obviously a lot of games. Tell they me about played. some of the best games. The, obviously you've got some oh. footage there. sound down there so you can maybe mention yeah. some of the, the people that, that we see. Yeah well look we had a we won in 97 and there was a, and we just had a really good really good group of lads who were all best mates off the field and loved doing the hard work together yep. um, would never miss a training like it. That was back in the days when you couldn't miss a training. No nah, well yeah you didn't want to because you were frightened, you miss out on your spot, and for sure, you know, from be being captain, like, which I was, right down to. The he was at Marble Range. Yeah, were you at Marble Range? Yeah, at the same time. Yeah, same time. Is that right? Yeah, same time. Yeah, we played. Oh, I didn't. I didn't play much A grade there, to be honest. Well, tell me about his A grade. Oh, his A grade was amazing. Mm. Yeah, he's a good player. They're in it. Well, here goes Cameron Foster's got a handball out. That was dropping the ball to my young Samson. Scotty Taylor swooped on it, got a quick kick. Daniel Wiling handball Good to hand. Jared Christian. Well done. He's going to settle and have a gander at these ones. Big kick into the square. I reckon Meg is under that and he's got it. Yes, he's too good there. He's certainly uh, well and truly out positioning Clinton Bennett. He's just, just obviously got way too much uh, class. He's, his ankle can't be bothering him too much because he's moving around. Uh, quite considerably. He's, he's uh, playing between the wing and the dead forward pocket. So just probably trying to shake Bennett off him, getting one on one and it's definitely working here as Enright lines up but always worry when Meg is having a shot for goal but not that time. Thank you very much. One sausage roll. That culminates in a great 10 or 11 minutes of football for Marble Range. They're, uh, they're first to the ball and their endeavour is, uh, is surely uh, a long way ahead of Lincoln South at this point. Yeah, he played EP, I'm pretty sure, when he was at Marble Range. A lot of EP. Yeah. I think he was captain. Yeah, right. Yeah, no, he was very, very I think he was captain in 97 when they won the state championship. Yeah. No, he was, a, he was a really great player for Marble Range. I mean, he could play for Kimber as well, but mainly played his juniors there. And then, yeah, then in Lincoln. We, I don't know how many years he was there, but a long time. A long time. Loved it, I think. Yeah. <laughs> Well, tell me about uh, when Mark went to Marble Range. How old was he, and uh, why did he go? Oh, he he, uh, he was having a, a pretty good season here. Really, he was playing really good footy here. Yeah. Uh, and a job came up in the bank. He worked in the RNZ Bank. Yep. And a job came up, and he said, "Well, I think I'll have a go at that." Yep. So within the click of a finger. Lincoln South were up here. Yeah, yep. And as they would have. Yeah, and a couple of them were up and they came to the training. 
Mm. And I was watching the training. I had no input then because I, I was still, yeah. Mm. Anyhow, he came home and uh, he said, oh, they want me to go down and have a look and see what's all this. He went down and he came home and he said, I'm not playing with them. Uh, Why's that, mate? There's a lot of money. Mm. And he said, well, two old pricks up there in the bar said, I hope you can play football for that sort of money. He said, I'm branded as a money player now, not a footballer. Mm. And Pitt McFarlane and a few of his mates mm. cooked him a chop and gave him a few beers and said, come and have a, have a go with the, the Marble Rangers. Played oh, outstanding football down there, like he, he was captain coach. Mark Enright leads Marlborough's football club through the banners. Yeah, I would have, we would have been a bloody nightmare to play against, I reckon. Premierships that we won, we always had a kid that we'd blood. Right. Um, Nathan McDowell, Jared uh, Scruffy Christian, um, you know David Traeger. So these kids that would we'd blood in grand finals, and um, they went on to be greats of the footy club. Mm. Nathan McDowell played a little bit of league footy over at Port Adelaide. And, mm -hmm. They've got good people right through the club, always have had um, blokes that influence me down there, you know, um, Glenn Zuma Owen. Um, mm. Really good bloke and one of my best mates and, and Pip McFarlane the same, um, both massive influences on my footy career and my life and mm. Peter West. Um, who's no longer with us, sadly, um, was probably the, the bloke that got that side into a position to win, you know, um, premierships down there. He was having to deal with, we were pretty pretty ratty off field, I'll, I'll admit that. There was a, a core group of us that liked to have a good time and mm. Westy knew that and he, he gave us a bit of rain. <laughs> Let us do what we run our own race, basically, to a point. But if we did something we didn't like, you'd know about it. Mm. And we respected him for that. Yep. Um, and he brought the best out in us. Um, obviously, you you might have a good side on paper, but you need to you need to do something with it. <laughs> Played in the 90s with Mark Enright? Yes. Yep. Who was obviously skipper and I think coach for a while. Yes. Yep. It's right on 50. Goes back, has a look at him. Who's up there? Yes, a nice lead and a good mark, young hooker. He oh. plays on immediately. Gets it around. Down in the direction near Enright's in the lead to the ball. Bobby Shane. What was he like? No, he was good. Yeah, yeah he's a good player. No, he was, um, yeah, very good. He's um, pretty casual as a coach? Uh, or was he intense? Oh, I wouldn't say intense, he was very thorough, yeah, yeah, um, yeah no, just 
Um, yeah, was very passionate, especially the first year. Yeah, I reckon. And you won that first year you coached. Up. Yeah, and uh, yes. Is that yeah, 2000? 2000, yeah. That was my last year, so. Yeah. Good contest, because so Enrod will still have to um, put a bit of influence on this game. Charlton to kick in, long bomb. Out in the uh, Eddie Betts direction, intercepted by Christian, who spoiled it. Beat comes down the beat, Davy, but uh, beaten there by Leroy Weed and gets it to Wormburner. The burner, she's heading around the boundary and gets one straight out in front of Ruley. Well done. Max, he's heading straight down the centre, and I reckon it's coming across to him, is it? Here comes, uh, oh, just eluded Hayden, um, D Bretton Dutsky there, and the ball's now rebounded to. Uh, Bobby Shane, who got slung after he kicked it. A big punch by Charlton. Finds the worm burner. He gets dumped as he gets rid of the ball to the boundary line. And uh, No, he, uh, he had a lot of passion and, um, yeah, a lot of good ideas. And yeah, and you played in which premierships? Uh, 87, uh, sorry, 97, 98. Charlton. And 2000. Right. Yeah, so I was sort of... Uh, Retired when I was 30, so. Yeah, okay, so it's sort of towards the end of your career, really. It was. I thought I was, it was 27 when I won my first one, so it was sort of like uh, I didn't know whether I was going to go through and win a premiership, but. Um, yeah, because you started playing when? Ah, oh, well, um, yeah, I've played here all my life. Uh, uh, 88 would have been my first A grade. How old? Yes. Would have been 18, yeah. Yeah, yeah. or 17, yeah. yeah. Yeah, there was no question you were going to play football for Marble Range? No. Well, no, I think the family was... originally Waybackers, is that right? Uh, yeah, well, that was for... Uh, way back? Yeah, that, that was for uh, Marble Range, mm. had an A grade side. When Waybacks were the country... They were, like, and I think my grandfather was with them as well, and, and that sort of yeah, thing. Yeah, that's what I mean, so. yeah, yeah, Orig originally. But... Uh, yeah. Chance for Anthony to clear now. You've got to run it forward quickly. Having it a contest for the Charlton. Great front, mark. Strong, strong mark, Charlton. He can go into the half forward area. Long kick in the half forward area. Yeah, Phelps is the there Phelps. in front. McGowan stays down. He'll get the ball, a handball away on quickly. Horgan. Down in is front of Rule. Now that's going to have to beat them to the ball here. Well done, Rule. Pushed him out. Got the ball clean. Oh, here's, here's the chance. Here's John Cock. This is danger for Saffer. He's going to run right into an open goal. Over to Horgan. Horgan. Must score a goal there. Air Peninsula hit the front for the first time. Well, Air Peninsula have hit the front for the first time in the game. <laughs> so who were the coaches that you played under here at Marble Range? Uh, well, I've had a few. Uh, Wayne Hull, Dave Sargent, mm -hmm. probably, and then Wayne Hull. Uh, or Tony Peddler when, when I first probably got into it. So well done, he Taylor. comes through strongly, gets Isn't the ball it? clean. You've got to back him up. Well, the Barossa player doesn't know what to do with it. He chips it around his body. Charlton good with mark. a good strong mark. Good saving mark. Yeah, Charlton's been another good player both, both uh, days. So, um, and Mark uh, Enright. And Mark Enright. And Peter West. And who, Peter West, of course. Which is Boyd West. That 97? Yeah, 97. What yeah. was he like so, as a coach? Oh, he was brilliant. Yeah. yeah. Very yeah. much like Boyd? Uh, yeah. Yeah, no, Boyd's, Boyd's definitely got a strain of his father. I think at the end of the day, he was, yeah, the one that got the best out of us all and a very good motivator and, yeah, that sort of thing. When so Won that premiership, which was a bit we of a did, we, we, Which was about, right, because the biggest thing back then was we had to beat Mallee Park. Correct. That was probably the biggest. Because in 99, biggest course, hurdle. You, you came through looking like yeah. world beaters. Yep, we had a... Grand yeah. finals, different thing. Yeah, we had a few. Mallee Park always step up that extra yard when it comes to finals, as you would know. So, but we did have the team. We had Mike Coochall came in that year. I think he kicked 120 or 30 goals or something. He was unbelievable. Uh, Neil Gould. We had all positions covered and a few young ones in there that were up and coming that were just the speedsters and mm. end up being great players for our club.
previous one was, which year was the previous one, 82? Yes, that was the last one. So there was a fair old, fair old drought. Right up to 97, so Peter West certainly did well. He did, yeah, so that was his third year. We done really well. We bowed out in the prelim final the year before, which we should have done better, but it's one of those games where you lose by three points or four points when you shouldn't. I think we came through and we beat Mallee Park at Mallee Park in the last round. We were just starting to get our momentum and we, and we dropped it, which probably hurt hurt us uh, big time. But um, yeah, the next year we were actually able to, yeah, we were just filled in a few gaps, probably that we didn't have the year before with Mike Coochell kicking 130 goals for the year and that sort of thing. And you so. beat Mallee Park? Yes, we did. Fierce game. Yes. That was yeah. quite willing. And then, yeah. Uh, which was always the case against Valley Park. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you came days. through and you won a brilliant victory. Yeah, which kicked us off. Next year, I reckon there was a 10 team, 10 player turnaround, and a lot of young ones came in that came up through our Colts. And you well. did it again. And we beat South. Deep in the back line, looking what to do with it, no idea. He's going to bomb it. A big screwy back towards the centre. Sammy Lakin's under that, got a hand on it. Tough stuff. Giddings mops up, gets a kick out. Weasel direction, pushed under the ball was Weasel. Patterson goes in hard. So too does Damien Evans. He gets it out of there. Oh, through comes Thompson. That was hard and high. Play on was the umpire's call. Well done. Got a kick forward. Dirty. I tell you what, that was absolutely magnificent football by Tomo. His only intention was to go straight for goal, forget the rest. And when he got himself a metre clear, he kicked a beautiful kick to uh, Mike Kuchel. Well done. Great stuff. Mark Akerst off, Alex Glass comes back on for South. So they're ringing the changes. Kuchel, probably from about 25 metres. Not it. a hard one for him. And thank you, I'll have that, he said. Well done, Mike Kuchel. Great stuff, Sh Sh Stephen Thompson. Yeah, well, it's Steve Thompson there, who I thought yeah. he was probably best on ground that day. Yeah. Troy Smith was, a, you'll hate me saying it, Weasel, but uh, <laughs> Tomo was probably... The best on ground, I thought. Because um, he just special for his hard work that he Gore did. Oh, could have been caught, got um, rid of it, but we yeah, on he was the just end of it. Everywhere and um, yeah, it was a pretty good win. Um, Back in the centre, Weasel. That's the knock. Thompson underneath it. Gore could have been caught, got rid of it, but Weeden on the end of it. It's the great Leroy Weeden. Probably still playing footy, Leroy. He's just fit. Rudog. Uh, Mike Kugel there, that's me. Mm -hmm. So uh, both teams have rung the changes here. Charlton got a good end on that. Geez, knocked it forward, but there's no one there for Marble Range. Mopped up well by uh, Nathan Little. He looks into the centre and finds Michael Sampson. Sampson goes back, drives forward, straight to centre forward. Rule over the top, got a spoil off there. Well done. Handball out. Thompson crashes through, gets it to Giddings. Giddings throws it on the boot. Well done, lad. I reckon Scotty Taylor's got a bit of blood on him. But anyway, play on was the call. He's got the ball now. Taylor overrun it. Through come uh, Alex Glass. Crash to the ground by Taylor. Great stuff in there. Out wide, Kim Rowe. You're too slow, mate. Megzi Enright dishes a handball backwards to Graham Charlton. Onto the left boot. Scotty Taylor by himself. Thank you. Wrapped up there by, uh, I reckon it's Nathan Weasel, Little. Weasel heading down the right-hand side here. Weasel's... Yes, and he gets him out wide. And Weasel, you've got a paddock. Steady, boy. Oh, and he well does. Done. Well done. A great kick, kick. A great kick. That was going to happen all the way. Well done, Weasel. That was great thinking. Great football. Good vision, too, by Scotty Taylor to pick him up. It was a pretty good win. Um, Lincoln South had a really good side as well. Mm-hmm. 
South actually beat Mallee Park in the prelim. So, and that was, yeah, that was. And then 99, uh, you, you had a year off and then came back in 2000. And yeah. Mallee's again. Yes. Murphy looks at field, someone to lead. Puts it out in front of the rule. Big Rooley. Mm. Used to idolise watching him. Tell me about it. I, I wasn't actually in Lincoln at this stage. It was still, um, when he moved down in end of 2000, but I got to watch the end of his career when he was probably just st uh, at full forward and just, yeah, just, I just, I just love watching forwards back in that era when it was literally kick it long to the forwards, let them go to work, and he used to clunk everything, big packs, he'd clunk everything, kick lots of goals. I think it was, it was O2 he won the male medal to centre forward. Like, that's unheard of these days. I used to love watching him play. Mm. And a good chip into Jeffrey Phelps. He'll drive it long into Rule. Rule in front. That's a good strong mark. Yeah, yeah well, in that EP 91 uh, state championship, uh, he came in. He was only because of an injury to, I think, uh, Humphreys. Don Humphreys okay. got injured at Albert and Oval in the preliminary. Well, Saffer playing around yes. with. Saffer playing around with the ball a bit there. Looking for Talbot. Oh, Good great, mark. Great mark, McKenna. Strong Excellent mark, mark, McKenna. Should put it right into the goal square, Air Peninsula. Another Air Peninsula player hobbling off here, being assisted off by the trainer. Oh, this is John Humphreys. He's done an ankle. He's a full forward. And on comes Darren Rule. And then I think Rule came in and kicked eight or nine, I think, in the yeah, corner right. at footy park. Ball thrown in. Parker against Jeffrey Phelps. Phelps in front does it well. Out strongly is Proctor. Drives into the full forward area. Rule in front. Can tip around the body. Umpire hasn't moved. That's a great goal by Rule. He never missed out of the duty. He was in a late kick for goal. This should be important, this bounce down. Marble Range must win it out of here. Ackland gets it straight to Christian. Christian's up and under. Went to sort of nowhere. Over the top come Todd Coombs for a mark. Thank you. Coombsy. Got to move it on now, looking for someone to give it off to. Kukul makes the lead and finds him. That's a good kick and a good lead, Gav. That was a very, very good kick. There was space there for Kukul to go to. He went to it and Coombs just popped the ball nicely in that. It was a nice, low, direct kick. Very important goal, this one from Marble Range. It is. It couldn't be in a better man's hands either. Big, dirty Kukul comes in now. He's about 40 out. Has a look at it and gives it a ride, gives it a ride. Just didn't make it, Gav. The ball's knocked down now. Um, Darren Miller done a bit of fancy dancing, but lost it. Rules picked it up. He's he has to. one around the corner and he's getting and he's, ridden into And he's the wearing ground. it too. But it doesn't matter because the scoreboard attendants moved over to change the score and the goal counts. So that was good play. And Rule, ever present, was just there, picked up the loose ball. Um, I thought... Young um, Miller Dunham was a bit too fancy with his footwork there. He danced around with it and when he should have just probably put it out to the boundary line to safety. Yeah, no, uh, the 2000 was a brilliant win because we were probably the second side for the year, but we always knew with a good side that we would uh, match match up well against them. They flogged Despite us. having lost by 40 odd points in the previous game, I think. In the second semi, yes. Anyway, Blue's got the ball again and he's going to put it down. What a correct way to bounce it, but what a shocker it come off. Ackland steals that. Now he just gets a kick hurriedly, gets ceremoniously dumped after he gets rid of it. Rule takes a grab, and that is a good grab. But the third team was Tasman's that year, and we probably beat them by 10 to 15 goals every right. year, so there was no real threat. And it was probably wasn't the... It's funny how you play football on that, but it probably wasn't the day to beat Mallee Park in the second semi. Like they jumped us and probably the older, wiser heads. We, uh, and they came into the grand final overconfident. Last time these two sides met, it was nearly four goal, a difference though. So Marble Range got a bit of making up to do. And that sort of thing. Uh, we made a few alterations to Mart's credit. Uh, Timmy Caulfield went down back. Uh, young Westy went down back and stood there, guns, and just shut him down. Knocked it out in the direction of probably Rule. But first two it was young um, Cartneri, I think. No, yeah, Cart no, Cartneri's got it now. But And he looks through the centre and looks for Eddie Betts and couldn't find him just too long. Matty West mops up at the back, rebounds it. Now that was high and is, oh, but early, early. out he goes. Much. Todd Coombs, well done. That was a nice bump. And uh, 
Play it on, he's called. Play it on. There was a free kick there to Mark Enright. This is just for the Marble Range archives. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. That's right, the Marble Range mook. You actually had a son out here today. Yes, I did. Yeah. And played really well. Yeah, no, he just got back from Europe from 10 weeks on yesterday, or Thursday night he flew into. <laughs> so he was a bit, uh, still had the Europe legs. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. He uh, certainly had some highlights though. He played like a real Charlton. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, in fact, it's Daniel Gobin sends it wider, and Tyson Collins runs it down just in time to take the mark. And just in front of the impact shed sign here at Wongaree Oval. Here is Daniel Gobin sending it longer. Just sits up in the breeze, flying in the contest. That's a good solid mark. I think that's Zach Calderwood out there. First time I think we've seen Zach Calderwood uh, in action today. Uh, been fairly quiet. Hand pass over the top. They're in a little bit of trouble here, Marble Range. And finally, they get the hand pass into space. Daniel Mini with the hand pass away to Max Black. All of a sudden, they're just breaking through the centre. Marble Range kicking into space. Guess who's going to run it down? He's got it now. What can he do? He swings onto the right, swings back left, decides to dance around Matthew Prout, deciding to go short. Doesn't quite find the man in Clements. Clements, hand pass away for Keeley. Keeley looks to hand pass again, and Tasman's bring it away. In fact, they hand pass to themselves and the ball goes over the boundary line and the boundary umpire in fact no it's going to be a free kick going the way of Matthew Prout. Prout was no match there for Bias he just ran rings around him uh, Billy as he uh, tried to get into the attacking 50 for Marble Range. And the free kick goes straight down the throat of Glenn Schreiber for Marble Range who decides to dance around the man on the mark. Schreiber kicking long towards the goal score. Oh, yeah. Range. And Tom Charlton will be lining up on one of the most vicious angles you'll ever see. He's going to have to use the wind here. He might go the check side. He certainly will go the banana kick. Nothing like getting into the banana versus check side argument. In fact, he just he decides to just go the drop punt. That works. How much like your, your father is, is he? Probably more so. Like yeah. the build, yeah. He'd be a bit, fair bit taller, right? Yeah, I've never seen my father play football, so Is that right? Uh, yeah, he retired when I, I think, well, when I was probably born, so yeah, hey, right. Um, okay. Yeah, so I never just going off uh, other people. I'm guessing he was a high flyer, and well, he certainly was. He was everything apparently. Yeah, won the male medal how many times? Four. Yeah, four times. Yeah, Which so. And Marble Range do it really well with their reunion stuff. Yeah, um, yeah which is good about Marble Range. Like, if you got something that needs to be done, there's like people putting their hands up. Like, and that's probably what makes a good club a good club. Like, yeah, well, you yeah. like the players can play games, but if you don't have the background and you don't have those volunteers and those mm. people putting putting time and effort into the club, then you're not going to have a great club. So yeah. Who um, cooks the meals and does all that stuff in the kitchen out at Wongri? Rotates through. Because um, I know the players. Yeah, we do it one week of the or one weekend of the year. Mm -hmm. um, but a lot of it's just volunteer, volunteers. Mm. And then there's usually a roster of under seventeens do it one week and B grade do it another week and then A grade do it another week and then right. parents whatever. But yeah, not short of volunteers, which makes us a great club really. Actually, who are the uh, backroom people who really put this era together? I mean. We're going to talk here about Tim, I guess, but... Yeah, Tim was pretty significant. Trev Castley's the team manager. He's been around for a long time, and mm. he's been important the whole way through. Uh, Coop's bringing him in mm. as uh, an assistant coach. All right, we've got a couple of injuries going on. So, Brock, you're going to ruck for the start of this quarter. As soon as you need a chop out, there's a new ruck. Next year. All right, Hats is going to have a crack. That's it. If, if that's not working, Hats, you'll be going to full forward and sides, you'll go into the ruck. All right? You start with me, uh, Jakey, then you'll come back on from there. So Hatch, you start on the bench. Everyone else from there. Great work, Jakey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So yeah. Go, love yeah. your tackling. Yeah. Keep that going out of there. You guys had a chop out there last yeah. year, so yeah. do that again yeah. if you need. All right. 
and we'll see how we go. Come Otherwise, on, the pressure, guys, is outstanding. Yep. Right, one more quarter of that sort of pressure, and we've got this. Come right, on, let's go, boys. It's going to happen, though. Yeah, Come on, fellas. He's got a lot of information. Really passionate about the club, too. He stepped away this year, so. Mm -hmm. That didn't last long. <laughs> <laughs> he's, back in, he's back in there yesterday. <laughs> oh, sorry, what was that? <laughs> oh, how he said then, how Coach stepped away this year. That hasn't, it didn't last long. He's back in as of now. <laughs> Super Cooper. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well done, Super hey, yeah, Coach. Nice oh, Cheers, mate. Right. Right. Yeah. Now, obviously, myself and Slade haven't been playing, so we've been filling that hole, but now um, Coops is back, which is very important, I think. Yeah. And we'll have all the action from the second term coming up next on our live and exclusive coverage of the 2023 Port Lincoln Football League Premiership season. Thanks to our number one ticket holder, Macca's Port Lincoln, the home of local footy on 5 double C. Slady stand out for the goal. Oh, that's what it's all about. That's what we're out here for. A bit of fun and a bit of money, right? This quarter, let's not go away from what we're doing. Maintain the intensity. Mid's real good in there. Jed real good on Stolly as well. Let's take another step with our emphasis on Stolly too, can we? Watch him grab it And Billy, mate, you know what he's going to do. He's going to duck every single time. So make sure you go low and make him earn every one that he goes for. Other than that, let's run an attack. Let's go here. Let's go. Tim was really important as well. He just aligned with like, my vision as well. And whatever I needed, he was more than willing to give. Mm -hmm. um, and organise. And yeah, he loves the club. Like, he wears his pinstripe. Mm. Suit to most of the grand finals. He used to wear it in under 17s of that. I think he's put it away, thankfully. <laughs> so, Tim, your thoughts? <laughs> <laughs> nah, so yeah, Tim, Trev, Coops, and then oh, everyone around the club has mm. done a lot of work. Like, we've only just built off the culture that's pre established there. Mm. I think because of the stipulations put on the club to join at the start probably helped um, the club sort of develop pretty strong. Yeah, a yes. strong club ethic, and, and that's probably showed in the um, in the way the Colts have continued to be strong back from that time that was written. So to go, first got a mile range. Once they formed that proper separate Colts committee. Yeah. Separate to the senior committee, they really yep. had a real strong Colts set up, I reckon. Don't mm. you? Sort of ramped That down. made a difference to... Oh yeah, it was a, something that was sort of fostered by Phil Olds when he came. Ja James Ross. James Ross, well, they were involved in the junior yeah. side of it. They got that up and going and it's yep. been pretty successful ever since. Kelly's going again, just had a snap on his unpreferred side, he's lurking out the back. And on the junior side of things, it's pretty, it makes the job a lot easier in a footy club because the juniors are so focused. We've got 11, I reckon it's 11 people managing our juniors and pretty well they do that standalone. Like I sit on the meetings, etc., and just uh, as a position of responsibility, but um, yeah, they, they manage the numbers, they employ the coach or appoint the coaches um, week to week. They, look, they um, manage the, the, the games or the, the, plat, the um, everything that goes on. So I reckon we, we're strong in our juniors and one of the biggest reasons is just that focus like, and the resources they've got. So that we're like as in the amount of people that go there and, and um, uh, support them, so no, I reckon that's that's one of our strengths all the way through. You got to have 30, 30 under eights, thirty under tens to have an under seventeens team, and that's been proven year on year. And you can see if you don't have those sort of numbers, you just can't carry all the way through. So. Mm. Yeah, and I'm not sure that all clubs have got junior committees now, even. Uh, Luke's in the ruck, taking the ruck. Not a bad throw in. Got a bit of run on here, Marv Rains. Yeah. 
What year were you? What year were you? Yeah, I was uh, assistant coach this team. Yep. Yeah. Boston's going forward. Trilly's got it. Trilly's gone in forward. Marv Range is on the run. And Boston's got caught behind. Let him run into an open goal. That's great footy. That's good footy. Because really, it's a completely separate thing. Now, there's that, yeah. many, that many Colts committees, there are uh, that many Colts teams. A lot of teams, and you got them all filled well. They're all doing well this year. Claims he threw it. That's a good mark. Good mark from uh, number 13, Mar Range. He's, he's looking to go in long here. That trelly's floating around for sure, that's not 15, surely. Wow. <laughs> hey. That trelly's got it. Someone needs to tackle him, put the pressure on him, don't let him run off. He's gold that, it's a beautiful goal. Beautiful goal. <laughs> Turning Colts players away at the start of the year is an indication of the yep. need. Mm. Parents want to get their kids here to play when they can. Yeah, which is good considering probably a few of them have to travel a fair way. Yep. You know, it's not like drop them at the Oval and mm. Lincoln, yep. Yep. walk down and go to training, take yourself. Ex-players can't even have their own kids playing Colts for us because they've already got yeah. like Matt Giddings. Yep. Mm. His lad plays for... Tasman's, didn't Tasman's, didn't it? Yeah. I think so. That'd be a bit tough, having to go out and bear yeah. it for the opposition. <laughs> a bit tough for the grandpa. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I don't think there's any cult come from here. No. <laughs> Quite possible. Oh, Coffins. Mm. In there. I don't know. Go, Robbo. And Mark Rains have got numbers for the ball again. And Will Smith over beyond. He just reads the ball so well, doesn't he? Mark Rains get another goal. Spots got filled at Rangers and I know there's a few from here yep. go to Boston's. Right. And I'm not sure where else, but... Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's good. Good that you've got numbers. Not good that you're turning away locals, yeah, but if you don't have position, then, yeah. Yep. Well, so, uh, getting back to the point that we had to win B-grade grand finals. Yes. That, that mm. hasn't we were taken in ten it. or fifteen years. Yeah. yeah. So uh, you know, you don't want to say it's a chip on your shoulder, but your your club's had to prove a point. I think. Yeah. You've had to jump that hurdle to get in the competition. Yep. Mm. So when we had to win our pre B grade premiership to get back in, I think that already claimed the red and white from there. True. Story. That's according to Tim anyway. So. Yeah. yeah. We'll take his word for it. We'll take his word for it. <laughs> Yeah, they're all pretty good on the uh, stories, that family. Yeah. In fact, uh, his lad Brock. Is, yeah, yeah, Brock's a character. was great after this year. Yeah. Or last year's grandfather. Yeah. Corey Beard was getting tagged. Oh. <laughs> so he kicked the goal! Yeah. That's wicked. That's freaking cool. <laughs> that looks like it's supposed to happen. Yeah, yeah. Liam Dennis can't figure it out. He does get it onto his boot quickly. Tasman's can't take it clean. Neither can Marble Range. The ball's tapping around. Who's going to take clean possession and break away? Marble Range is the one. The ball comes out to Marble Range. He gets tackled. Now Dennis. He can't take it. Thompson goes in there quickly and gets it. It's all Marble Range here though. Daniels can't take it. Comes down. Marble Range. Got plenty of numbers. Now goes back in, into attack. Marble Range here. Yes, the mark taken by Jennings. Jennings now looking out wide for Boyd West. This is going to hit him. No, he's not going to get there. But he grabs it. Clear. Gets a handball out. Can't take Oh. Ball comes down. Marble Range. Tackle. He's tackled. He has a kick. 
There he is. Yeah, it's through. He's going to give it. He's given the goal. Corey Beard. Well, it's not having him ran while he was around. Yeah, oh. Drifting a long way from his usual half back position. I've said it once and I'll say it again. He's probably the best player I've ever played with or against. Here they go, stole now, goes long forward. Can they take a mark, Tasman? Cox in front, up they go, comes to, off the ground. Here's George Wilkes, can he get it? Picks it up, no, he falls over. Oh, he's tackled high. No umpire says play on. Oh, that was very, there's a siren. There it is. As we said, we didn't think they had enough time. In fact, they'll have that row of Marble Range legends sit, sitting there, of course, all loving it. The old boys. No, I was happy for them. Yeah. Back-to-back -back premiers unbeaten. Two consecutive seasons in the Port Lincoln Football League. And then, of course, you've had a little bit of a rivalry with uh, Tasman's too. Yeah. Who, uh, of course, aren't shy about spending the money. No. And... Uh, he keeps it going, it's a two-on-two -two contest. Pack flew, and Sampson brought it down. But Tasman's back with it. Jenna hand pass over the top to advantage. Looking for an option. Right foot, snap, and goals! All the way home. Tasman's four goals. And along to 4-3, 27. Marble Range, two straight, 12. And that is in contention, no doubt for the EP Surf goal of the day. Winter sale on now, take 20 to 70% off at EP Surf. They shouldn't do that to you, mate. You've saying something different all year and then they change it on grand final day for you. That's, that's, a, that's a bit tough, I reckon. Uh, we do it all this afternoon, thanks to our number one ticket holder, Macca's Port Lincoln, the home of local footy. Umpire back with it in the centre. That was a great kick from Ben Daniels and they are really starting to dominate now, Tasman's. Okay, up in the ruck, stole, no, back. I'll skip up in a bit, but uh, they really came out playing yeah, great footy. Which is real different than the week before because we can't remember how many goals kicked in the first quarter, or six or something like that in mm. the first quarter and the game was done. Mm. Yeah. And then we just pretty much went into containment mode mm -hmm. and didn't really get challenged for much of the rest of the day. It just stayed that yeah, Maybe took that psychology into the ground. Yeah. Tasman's taking a bit of time off the clock here. He's going to go back to Masters, is he? No, goes down centre wing, goes long. Out to centre wing, pack formed, up they go, oh, at the back. Great mark. And then they come out like, we're really ready for that fast start from us, and then they started quite quickly themselves, so. Come, plays on now, comes out wide, looking for Wolford. Up they go, oh, Liam. Great mark. He's going to have another kick from exactly where he did again. No, he goes short this time. Left footer in the gap, Harris in front, beautiful kick. What a left foot pass there by uh, that, uh, Liam Cox and Harris now. This is very important for Tasman. So Tasman's are looking terrific at this point. Yeah, they've they'd done a few little moves too, like throwing Cox forward. We kind of anticipated they were going to do that, and he's pretty, like, he's a speed athlete. Mm. Um, so he had to find the right matchup for him, and he was getting a fair bit of it there. What'd you do about it? Uh, we just we tried a number of matchups on. I think we started Kobe, and then we found Kobe was probably a little bit slow. Mm -hmm. uh, we tried Fluff Dennis on him, but I don't know if. Fluff was big enough for him. Mm. But yeah, Harris is a good player too, particularly in finals. He stands up. If he's going, mm. they're a fair old chance. Mm -hmm. It's Marble Range, 6 1 37. Tasman's 5 3 33. 13 minutes gone in the third term. Tasman's to bring it in from their own goal square. Moving away now to that left hand side, kicking to contest. And no, they can't take the mark, but Marble Range still with it. Now the hand pass picked off by Tasman's, and they're going to go back on the attack, looking to the forward line. And there's no one there. Harris, now Harris, can he get the ball to sit? No, he can't. Is that going to be high? Umpire call play on. Now Marble Range one holding the ball, and they get it. They get it. Harris ducked his head, wanted the free. Well, Billy Bites had a go as well. And Max, had, he hadn't played much all year at Osteo's Pubis. Yeah, OK. That's so he was good. just finding his feet again. Yep. And he, he, the year before, he was playing as a high up forward, then he ended up playing down back this year and a bit of wing. And, but he had, a, he had a good final series. Mm. Once again in ruck, and we're underway in the second term. Stoll wins the tap out for Tasman's, but Bias is there first for Marble Range. Gets a right foot kick into the forward line. Tap down by Tasman's. Marble Range first there, holding the ball a lot. Oh, great fingertip in there. Tasman's really playing grand final footy here. Into the forward line, and Tasman's there first, getting ridden into the ground. Strong tackle from Marble Range, and we're going to see a ball up. Yep, grand final here. 
game on. Closure for Tasman's at the northern end of Centenary Oval. Umpire sends the ball into the air. Tap out one by Marble Range. Only gets as far as Jared Seal, who bombs into the forward line. But Marble Range, they can transition quickly. It's away with Josh Slade going long. And oh, no, the great Tasman mark there. He's got his fingertip to it. Got it with a second grab, fantastic. Tech Sinclair, Sinclair continuing on to the right wing. It's got the momentum here still, although Marble Range really do have the players. And that bloke there. Mistoli. Yeah. Can really play. He's a good bloke. He's a good bloke, good player. Yeah, he's a good I worked with him at the high school. Right. Last year as well. Yeah, he's just a nice fella. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't tell him that. But, <laughs> but a yeah, great play. And of course, he got injured late in the game, which yeah. wasn't... Yeah, yeah, uh, hyper extended his elbow, I reckon. Yeah. yeah. Kicking with the win, they need to get more. That's exactly right. Umpire balls up. Now they punch it out and it falls to ground. Tasman's can't cleanly pick it up and it's bouncing around a little bit of a pinball action and now it's taken to ground. Tasman player down. We've got a Tasman's player who hasn't moved. He's very slow. Stolly, I reckon. And if that's Stoll, and it, well, Stoll's not in the ruck, so I think it could be. And ball bounces out to the side. Liam Cox trying to pick it up. It is Stoll. That could be a big problem. Because we lost Jed early on, so. You did, that's right. Played the game without. Yeah, with yeah Jed, he rolled his ankle. He had an ankle problem for uh, probably the last round. Mm -hmm. And then it just flared up in that, that uh, early on. So then we had to ruck Shrives. I'm sure I was willing to accept like losing the centre bounce. Mm. But I thought Shribes, because uh, Jace was doing most of the work in the centre, and Shribes was hard to get beaten around the ground. He just took front and centre position. Billy Byers ticking in now. Plays on, goes out to the outer side. Big long kick, it's a good kick. Uh, up they go, oh, at the back. Good mark there by Schreiber. That's a good mark, Schreiber now. Stolly found it a little bit more difficult to get around, and then we chucked the third man up into Stolly as well, just to make his day a little bit worse. Yep. Um, and Shribes, I think he actually, I feel like he changed the game. Mm. When we get into a bit, because Stolly was getting a fair bit of dominance early on. He was. Just feeding them. Um, and I've got cameras in front of me, Beams. Okay, up they go. Harris now. In front, Shriver gets a tap out. Mini tries to take it away. Can't take it. The ball under the legs down there. Shriver gets in there. He's been a bullock in this uh, third quarter. He's really lifted his game, uh, Big Shribes. He's done very, very well. Up they go now. Shriver, big thump. Goes out. Who will get to it first? Marble Range, take it. Castle gets the handball out, nobody in particular, but uh, Bryce Mar Price Marsh picks it up. Now Beard comes out, in the middle, Sampson, Sampson gets the handball out, Beard again through the middle. Oh, and our midfield just needs a second Feeding option. him, like his yeah. tap rucking is yeah. just beautiful. And our midfield just needed an another opportunity to either bring it to ground or make it a, a bit competitive, and then they would generally come out on top. Now he hasn't got a lot to kick to, not sure where to go, going out wide, a mongrel kick out there. Up they, oh, Cock, can't quite take it, recovers. Gets his hands on again, gets it out. Umpire says play on, the ball comes out there. Tasman's pick up the ball. Not sure where to go. Stoll now. Gets a big, big mongrel kick up forward in front, Tasman. Can't take the ball. Tyson Collins picks it up again, gets it on his boot. Straight to Marble Range. He can't take it cleanly. Now, tackle, good break clear. Yeah, he really comes into his own. Old Brock in the last couple of years. Yeah, Showing yeah, yeah. confidence, that lad. Gets a bit of the footy too. Yeah, nah, he's turned into be a pretty good player. Pretty reliable down back. Who's the fella kicking in for us? Uh, is that young Brock? Brock Davis? It's only a young lad. Yeah, no, Brock Davis. Yeah, no, he's, he's pretty little out there from all the way back here. He works hard? Yeah, he does. He doesn't really get beaten too much either, old Brock. Yeah. And I've had him, I coached him in 17s as well, so really, I've been around him for a long time. Frosty plays on from full back. And uh, yeah, I reckon that was young Brock Davis taking a grab there. So he's another one of our young lads that has been doing really, really well in the A's. Diff is a great commentator. It's a shame he stopped doing it because the umpires really ripped into them oh, really? after um, he and Beth called that game at Wongri. Oh, really, it was the return match. Well, the, the match the following year at Wongri. Yeah, yeah, where yeah. You, where you just nudged them out. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Which was which was beautiful that uh, that I got that. In fact, it's just uh, let's flick over to that that one. It's a big kick out. Yeah, nice big kick out. Whoops, nearly in the back, boy. I wasn't we'll even close it. in the back. We'll take it. Hey? Nah, I wasn't even close. Wasn't that? Nah. Okay. A nice little handball over the top. Now out 
and that's Kyle Cassily. Yeah, so it was probably a little bit similar uh, pattern to the 2020 game where they were coming back, but we had the opportunity, well, we prevented them from running over the top of us at the end there and just were able to wrest momentum away from them. So it's a pretty significant moment um, and really indicative of kind of how we wanted to play, mm. uh, to not let teams have momentum for a long period of time and be able to identify that as a broader group rather than just the leaders identifying it. So everyone can identify when the moment is to perhaps slow the game down or vice versa to attack. Mm. Um, so yeah, that was pretty significant really. Right now, Tim Davis is having heart palpitations. Being in the committee out at Wonga, he put together a fantastic team that should be a premiership winning team, but it's not really happening at the moment. Big pack forms, up they go. No one can take the mark. Comes down, wave it, grab it. And there's stacks on the middle there, and the umpire says... There we go, one goal to half time. The, the siren sounds for half time here in the 2021 uh, grand final between Wayback's and Marble Range, and on the Curtis of Sales and Service score. But as I said, it's Mar Wayback's 4 6 30, leaving Marble Range 1 7 13 here at Centenary Oval. It was incredible the feeling going, like, we'll, we'll try and be positive, like, we're running, running past the crowd, but like, everyone was like, shit, like, we're not going well here. And then as soon as Beardy started talking, I know myself, I just flicked. I was like, nah, we're, we're winning this. Yeah, and then yeah. when, when we come out, of, out through, after half time, it was just a completely different team, completely different feeling. Like, it's like, we're going to win this. Yep. Yep. No, he, yeah, I reckon he turned the, turned the tide there and got in everyone's heads and, and, and turned them around. And they yeah. reinstalled the belief and then it, the whole group just jumps on board, you know, like it's just, you know, as a unit again, yep. going forward. Yeah. Couple, couple goals down and that change room was vibrant, confident. Mm. Mm. Like everyone, yeah. And Believe knowing, of course, that Wayback's hadn't actually really kicked the goals. Mm. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. They yeah. were dominant. I had the opportunity. Only three goals up. Yeah. 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 yeah, we knew we couldn't be much worse, so we only had an upside. But they were, they're pretty good at locking down. Yeah. Getting oh, yeah. in front and then locking it down. Really they're good contestants. Yeah. Turning it into really, um, yeah, not spectator-based football, but mm. they, they win games by getting in front and locking it up. So yeah, you know, if you kick probably nine or ten goals, you've got Wayback's covered, like they're a real low-scoring, defensive, contested, like mm -hmm. Mungle side there. Because here you are coming in at half-time, and at this point in time, I think you had one goal on the board. Yeah. I think I kicked it too. You did? For Marble Range. Umpire throws it in the air. Tap down one by Marble Range and it's off hands and Wayback's back with it. They get the crumb first and they bring it away. Incorrect disposal, is it? No umpire calls play on. Billy Bias back with it. He gets onto the right boot. And that oh, is great mark. mark. Boyd West. Boyd West held his ground beautifully. He was almost falling. I think he was falling over when he actually took the mark. It wasn't a high flyer, but he held his balance just long enough. In between then, two Waybacks, mate. He well, had a two-on-one contest and somehow he held on to it. But he's going to be on a bit of a wonky angle. He Here's your check point. side. He, he could be looking at the check side with the banana kick. There you go, Beebs. I'll get you one anyway. In comes Boyd West and he slots it straight down the centre. With and a beautiful check Rain. side. With a beautiful banana check kick side. Just quietly. And on the Curtis of Sales and Service scoreboard is the first contender for the EP Surf goal of the day. Make it your goal and, look great uh, with EP Surf. And you were looking pretty second rate. At yeah, the we were. Um, they looked like they had. They were moving the ball quite well. And Waybacks will get the free, and they'll play on quickly. Oh. And that is an absolute stinker of a kick. Oh, and it'll so sit down somehow. Clifford Weitra took it over. I thought he took it over the boundary line. Boundary. Oh, nearly. Oh, they've got a chance. Here he goes. Open goal. Hindjes. Hindjes. Into the wind. Gee, I'll tell you what. Absolutely filthy That's about that because there is range. no doubt in my mind Clifford Weitra took that ball over the boundary line. The whole ball wasn't over the line, I understand, but his body was over the line, but the ball, whole ball's got to be over the line. I don't believe the whole ball was over the line, so play on. No problem at all with that one. You're absolutely wrong. Geez, you're being generous to the boundary umpire there, Beebs. I thought that was for sure and certain over the boundary line. He but it will sure. count on the Curtis's sales and service scoreboard. And Waybacks, they now move along to a nine-point mark. Margin. It's Waybacks 3 4 22, leading Marble Range 1 7 13. Thanks to our number one ticket holder, McDonald's Port Lincoln, the home of local footy. Mm. Which is, I suppose, where you had to plan for them to play a particular way, and they come out and played a slightly different, a slightly more open and attacking mm -hmm. uh, game style. So we had to address that at half time. They probably made some mistakes by getting stuck into Geordie Clements at half time as we were running off, and it doesn't take Geordie much to get fired up. He's, uh, you provoke the barony. Didn't he just play well after yeah. that? Yeah. Someone said something to him, he's like, well, <laughs> you give me the shits now, I'm going to go.
mm. turn it on. So because it was it was him who of course uh, pretty much set up your winner. Yeah, yeah, and then straight after that goal. There was that moment, it would probably come up here, where he, he glides across in front of two other blokes and takes that mark. Um, I remember a bit, I was like right there, it was just like I was ball watching. It didn't even, I was just like in awe of him taking it. was almost like that Leo Barry mark at some stage where he just mm. glides across and takes it. I was like, well, oh, that's pretty good. Just in this particular good. moment, that's, that's real good. And then Beardy did something similar on the other side of the oval. So He throws it up now. It's Hinges and Wolford. Wolford wins the tap down. We first to the ball. Oh, Wavex, no. Yes, they do get the free kick. Too high, it was there. They're going to have to get as far forward as they can. Clifford Weitra, he bombs away to that left-hand side. Oh, Great the Marvellous, the Marvellous, what a mark in front. From yeah, it all just fell into place in that last, yeah, st- probably five minutes after trying to kick that goal. Mm. But here at half-time, of course, you've gone in there and they haven't really got the goals on the board themselves. No, they could have put us away. Um, so when we went in half-time, it was more of a discussion about the, just trust what we can do as a, broad, as a group. Mm-hmm. Um, and have confidence that we've come back from situations like this before. Mm-hmm. And there's a reason why we're undefeated, I suppose, throughout that year is that we can play high quality footy mm. that stands up. So, But the, the big thing here is that we'd been in previous years in kind of similar spots and we got to grand finals and we'd, or into finals and we'd choked. Mm. Um, there was a year where we, I think we were, we only lost two games and we were top and then we went out in straight sets. Mm. So it was almost like perennial losers for a period of time. Um, so it was, yeah, we had to challenge that mentality and this probably sets us up for the year after as well. Just about being in finals and being able to overcome that adversity. And the umpire will throw it up right in front of the grandstand here at Centenary Oval. He looks for the contest and he tells Hinges, who gives instructions to Wolford as well. He wants his passage out of there. Telling the runner to get off the ground. That's what he was doing. Tells the umpire, tells the runner to get out of there. And it's pinball, pinball. Who can get there first? Just rubbering ahead. Do what you can. Tyne and Keeley controls it. Tyne and Keeley gets onto the right boot. It's a little kick over the top. He won't mind that. Curtis Evenden back with it now. Evenden. Oh, Wayback's come. Oh, he's caught. Oh, he shrugs the tackle. Oh. They pile on. Wayback's come out with it. Oh, my goodness, it's out of bounds. How about the pressure? They're starting to feel it? Yeah, they're starting to get a bit of pressure. They've, like they, they probably made a little bit of a mistake too. Like They just went ultra-conservative for that mm. second half and were trying to slow the game down so much and it kind of played into our hand a bit that we just had relentless amount of attacking opportunities. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's the classic mistake, really. Yeah, they had to probably keep playing attacking footy and playing the way that we were in the first half. I know it's easy to say, but... Well, they didn't have enough goals at that point. Yeah. I think they'd only kicked five goals. I mean, yeah, so. so they hadn't put us away at any means, but then they certainly went really conservative for that second half. and That just gave us a bit more opportunities, really. Mm. He got there in the end, and now the boundary umpire says that it's over the line, and he will throw it in in the left back pocket for Marble Range. Range is going to want to try and get onto this ball and try and get it out of there. That he was throws it in. Wolford wins the tap down. It was Kaniska there that uh, threw through that pack, mate. A big, big uh, jump at the pack. It's a free kick now to Boyd West, really trying to lift his coach leading from the front. A couple of good touches early in the last quarter. 2021 Port Lincoln Football League Grand Final. Out there, oh, good mark. No, not paid. Umpire says play on. Wayback's picked the ball up. Kick, kick off the ground, and that'll go out of bounds, and it'll be a free kick to, is that Ned Brooks over there? I think it is. And then he will take it on centre wing for the Marrain side. They need to start to move the ball forward. Start getting, he's not sure where to go. Umpire calls him play on. Just goes long down the wing. Up they go. No one can take the mark. Goes over the back. Greg Maxfield leads in the race of the ball, but it will come off hands. It'll be a throw in right in front of the... Jebba's goal, would not it? Mm-hmm. This is a very, very important moment in the game. Wayback's leading 5-10-40. The score doesn't look great, does it? No, that's what I mean. Yeah, and this is in the last quarter. They don't score again, do they? No, they don't. Yeah. yeah. And this is an unbelievable goal. He gets a handball and a mini. Gets it back again. Here they come. Oh, yes, he says. And that's the one Marble Range made at the end. Now, that is a big moment. That is a big one. Yeah. No, it's funny because um, Jeb kicked that goal and then ran back to the wing and started spewing up. Wow. Yeah, I'd had to get rotated off the bench. 
And that was dehydration or overexcitement? Oh, probably everything. <laughs> Bit of hard running. Mm. 9.33, they trail way back, 5.10.40 on the Clevis and Sales Service scoreboard, mate, and that's a very important goal for the Marble Rain side. If they break it down into bits and bits and bits, then they can say they need three goals to get in front. They can look at themselves and now say, that's one. Yeah, and you can see the, the nerves that yeah. you're feeling at this point. Yeah. You're feeling sick. Yeah. <laughs> and we were confident, but there was moments where it got down to the last couple of minutes, like, geez, are we actually going to do this or not? Mm. You start, start to doubt yourself a little bit, but then... You left it late. You always left very late. <laughs> <laughs> and Jennings will affect the tackle, and the umpire calls mine, and he'll ball it up right on this left centre wing for waybacks. And United, Yelena in a boil over. In great Flinders have won by three points. Let's see if there's a boil over here. Max Black with it. Onto the right boot. Looking for a contest. And there's all sorts of players Bias. around. Billy Bias with it. He's Bias. done the dribble. Can he He's run it? Can he run Oh, we have six posters or something. Yeah. It's a post. <laughs> Billy Bias had it. And he couldn't run it home. And Marble Range get the point. Way back, 5-10. And look at the number of points. Yeah. Because it was blowing. Yeah, up. it was a windy day. I had three cameras blow over on their tripods that day. Really? Yeah, you know, it was howling. That's how strong it Probably was. Probably excuse me in the post six times. We did get, we were pretty unlucky there. I think it was either the third quarter or fourth quarter. We had, I think, three or four balls hit the post. Like. You did, actually. Going for goal. Boundary umpire throws in. Marble Range back with it. They get the handball. Umpire calls play on. Wait, and Marble Wolford. Range once again. Wolford goes long on the left boot. Looking for Tyne and Keeley. He can't get it. It's spoiled over oh. the back. Oh, handball. It turned away. And now uh, Marble Range back with it. I think that's Keeley on the right boot. He's going to look to the centre. And is there a mark? No. No mark taken. It's called play on. And now on the left boot. It's Castley. Castley. Can he get the mark? Oh, Dennis hit oh, the post, post again. again. It's another poster. Marble range. Can't buy a goal. Oh, it's frustrating, very frustrating, but it's a good point. But it's interesting with the score here, he whittled it away and whittled it away because there's more points coming, I think. Yeah. And it bounces, bounces, dribbles, dribbles, and over the boundary line, boundary umpire will... I think he's going to throw it in, or is it going to be a free for last contact? He's going to throw it in. He's going to throw it in. There's not going to be much time on, mate. Hardly been many goals scored, so it, you, once you get into time on, there's only probably a couple of minutes to go. Boundary umpire throws it in. Tap down one by no one. Hind just at the second attempt, and they come away with it way back. Way back. Get her on the boot. Oh, Marble Range desperately hanging on in defence. Come away with Price Marshall. Marshall jinx the man on the mark. He did well. Price Marshall keeps it going. Goes to the centre, and that's almost the mark taken there by Waybacks. Everybody misses it. Uh, oh, good tap on Todd Owen with it. And now who can get to the first contest? Oh, strong oh, did Jericho well there, Jericho. And now Seth Myers. Myers onto the right boot. He gets it. They can't control it. They're way back. Oh. Everyone's over the top. Price Marshall with it. He's and take, legs a taken call out. for a trip. And yep. there's going to be a free going to Price. Mar in no. fact, it's not Marshall. It's going to be He's paid in favour of Jordan Clements. Clements now with it in the centre square. You can hear the crowd. They're just good saying kick. go forward. There's plenty of room out here. Oh, and the mark drops is it. dropped. How did he drop it? But he continues play oh, on. They fall over. And then Jerry loses time for the first time all day, I reckon. Can he oh, he gives it to the man in front. Yeah. See, he's backing me in nine times out of ten, but that wind puts a bit of, like, doubt in the mind. Doubt in the mind. Thanks, bro. You feeling it? <laughs> um, I was pretty confident I was going to hit the goal. Just because we'd kick three or four points mm. that would normally go in on a good day. This to put Marble Range in front. Tyne and Keeley taking his time. He knows how big but this the captain. is. We're just about to enter time on. Keeley, he's right in front. Five degree angle, maybe. Kicking from 35. What are you going to do with it, Spog? Wind coming across. Tyne and Keeley. Kick the goal, of course. He nails it. And Marble Range. Curtis's Sales and Service scoreboard leading way back 5 10 40. 
21 minutes gone in the final turn. Marble Range hit the front. Our number one ticket holder, the home of local footy. That has to be the EP Surf goal of the day. Make it your goal to look great with EP Surf. Well, just with the pressure on, not a hard kick, but just the pressure of the time of the game to put the side in front. Got to be the the. Uh, you the said crowd EP is surf going goal of the day. Berserk. Certainly puts him in contention for the Lincoln Surf MVP award. Fill up with the latest new season stock at Lincoln Surf. For mine, the. Uh, EP Surf goal of the day has to go to Tynan Keely, one of the most important kicks he'll ever kick in his footy life. We'll see if we can bring you the presentation. <laughs> Is he pretty? Oh, 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 oh. Ice in the veins after he kicked that goal. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, no. No. Man, the boys in the last quarter, and, and who kicked that last goal? Uh, that, was that your lad? That was your that lad! Was your lad. Oh, <laughs> to be honest, he didn't have a lot of it in the game. <laughs> he was, was well held. That was probably he, his, came, was, he came through when it mattered. Was that his only kick? <laughs> no, it wasn't, many, it wasn't his only kick. Wasn't too many more, was it? Yeah, wasn't right. too many more. But I tell you what, he was important, wasn't it? When it counts. Oh. Yeah, yeah, nah. Tyne and Keeley taking his time. He knows how big this is. We're just about to enter time on. Keeley, he's right in front. Five degree angle, maybe. Kicking from 35. What are you going to do with it, Spog? Wind coming across. Tyne and Keeley. Kick the goal, of course. He nails it. And Marvel Ryan. Yeah, thank you. Cool. Don't like that. He's all right. Okay. Great jumper. Great club. Right, Pix. We're not near. All right. Thank you. All right. Thanks very much again. Easy, mate. Boyd West. Good on you. Cheers, man. Do you think this would be an excellent time to talk about Marble Rain? Oh, fucking brilliant. <laughs> a great club! Did you drink beer at Marble Rain? Can't, well, can't agree. Good <laughs> mates. We are good, good people. Mates. Very good mates. And they love you too. Yes. <laughs>